Bro, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for B for B Boss OGG to be the first song on the playlist. Hello, good good morning, afternoon, good evening, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to. Uh... <laughs> oh man, starting off strong, starting off very strong. Get some B emojis in chat, please. That's that's a good sign of things to come, I think. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hello, hello. Good to see all the familiar faces. Enjoying the uh, the earlier stream. It's nice and early in the day today. Good for good for the European viewers. Honestly, pretty good for me too. I just kind of I, I, it's nice to be streaming when the sun is still relatively like high in the sky. <laughs> I love seeing the normal like early chat banter interspersed with just a bunch of bees. <laughs> so good. Just a classic banger. Great way to start your morning or your afternoon or your evening, wherever you might be, whatever you might be doing. Happy to see you, friends. My uh, my throat might be a little more shot than usual today because um, if you've not been keeping up with uh, with local Canadian news. There's, there's a whole lot of wildfires going on in Alberta, and I think also in BC right now. Which is, uh, they're not near me, which I'm very thankful for. But, there is a constant blanket of wildfire smoke overhead. Like, I'm looking outside right now, the entire sky is just, like, this horrible grayish brown. You look at the, up at the sun, and it's like a, uh... <laughs> And it's like a, a the red eye of Sauron just staring down through the through the smoke. It's it's terrible, but yeah, no, I'm doing I'm doing fine. I'm okay. I'm totally safe where I am. Don't worry about me. But it's uh it does does wear down my throat. That's for sure. I'm keeping I'm keeping my my blinds down today. I'm keeping myself well insulated as best I can to try and fight against uh, not only the smoke but the heat too. Because, I mean, it just that's the main thing that's brought on the wildfires, right? Is just the intense... Well, actually, I think, I mean, a lot of the wildfires are apparently caused by humans. But, you know, that's... But the warm, dry conditions probably do not help. <laughs> Hope anyone who is more affected by the wildfires than I am is, is doing okay. If anybody happens to be listening, my heart goes out to you. There's a, there's a lot going on this year, so... This time of year, I mean, we usually start getting wildfires this time of year... Um, mostly out in BC is when they get them, but, uh, we're getting a lot more in Alberta this year. And so it's a bit, uh, a bit spookier, a bit closer to home, but it's all good for the time being. Anyway, I digress. We're not here to discuss that, but what we are here to discuss is a little bit of fan art. We actually have some fan art to go over before we get into, back into Fractured Farm and hopefully get our iron bar today. Very much looking forward to that. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's we've been unlucky so far, but uh, our luck's bound to turn around eventually, right? Right? <laughs> we'll see, I suppose. But before we can get to that, we got to go over just one little piece of fan art today. But what a gorgeous piece it is. It is this lovely little number here from Hello MX Math on Twitter and Tumblr. Just a very cute uh, rendition of Beatrix here with the mouse ears. The mouse ears really tie her look together somehow. I, I don't know how it... Because it doesn't really, like, even match, like, the color palette, but it matches her so well. This And this is, like, I mean... This makes me want to put glasses on her as well, because she does not normally have glasses, but this is, like... Oh, my gosh, this is too cute, right? This is so adorable. Thank you to Hello MX Math for, for sharing this. This is a very cute rendition of Beatrix. Okay, poke. Okay, poke. She is, uh, simpatico with her... One of her best friends, the Hat Mouse. I mean, obviously her best friend is the Dwarf, Homie, and all that. But, uh, but Hat Mouse is, you know, Hat Mouse is everyone's best friend. And she wears that loud and proud above her above her head with the mouse ears. <laughs> thank you to Hello MX Math, and thank you to all the fan artists who have shared fan art over the past year and a bit. If you'd like to share your own fan art, exclamation point Discord, or there's a link to the Discord in the description below. You can find the fan art channel there. Let us know how you want to be credited, if you want to be credited, if you want to be shared on stream or not, and I'd, I'd just be happy to see it either way. So, thank you, thank you. All right, let's get this show underway, shall we? Let me get my uh, my windows all in the right places here. Hey, by the way, did you guys know there's a new thing 
in YouTube chat. I don't, I don't know. It's, this popped up when I... Because I, I always pop out my YouTube chat at the start of the stream so that it's like nice and big and I can have it in its own window. Um, and when I did that today, YouTube notified me of a, a brand new feature called Pinned Chat. Did you guys know that you can pin a chat message? Holy cow. What new technology, what new sorcery is this? Let me, let me demonstrate it live and in person. Exclamation point goal. And then Nightbot, that, thank you. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> it literally came up with this whole little, like, pop-up message with, like, a, a big, like, whoop de doo hoop plots like, brand new to YouTube chat, pinned messages. I'm like, YouTube, are you okay? <laughs> are you all right? But hey, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes what's old is new again, and you just gotta appreciate, uh, you gotta appreciate what you already have anyway, so... I'm I'm okay with it. If YouTube, you know, want you want to sell your pin chats, pin chats are pretty great. They they are a good way to facilitate information to new viewers. They are a good way to just uh, to add a little more life to the stream. It's just a fun time overall. All right, back on fractured farm. You can see our um. Let me actually frame this the right way. There we go. So, yeah, you can see our counter of Shadow Spirits slain in the top left. We ended off at 100 Shadow Spirits last time, and for those who might not be up to date, um, we are allowed to kill, like, Void, like, uh, Shadow Spirits, like Shadow Brutes and uh, Shadow Shaman now, whereas I wasn't previously. We changed that ruling, so now we can go and get the, try and get the 2% Iron Bar drop from the, uh, from the Void Spirits, which is the best it's technically the best way we can get a we can use to get a um to get an iron bar it's not been too kind to us so far but we'll get it today i'm sure we'll get it today new poll or not absolutely new poll let me actually why don't we just start it right now are we resetting if it doesn't drop that has been the way so up until now yeah we've basically been uh killing one reset if it doesn't drop and then rinse and repeat we've done that a hundred times so far and we'll do it a hundred more if we have to all right, start a poll. How many uh, void spirits will be slain for the iron bar? Basically, how big is that number in the top left going to be before we um, before we get our iron bar? It's going to be... Hey there, Lisa, by the way. Hello, hello gonna be um 101 because we gotta it's gonna be at least 101 101 to we'll go let's let's do like just straight up no we'll do we'll do 30 again i think 30 was a good range 101 to 130 131 to 160 161 to 190 or 190 plus all right. Poll is in place. Pin message is in place. People are coming in. They're rolling in at the right time. We're, let's get this show on the road. Let's do things. Hey, Chilo G. Good to see lots of familiar faces and names. All right. Um, let me get back in the rhythm of how this goes now. We drink our coffee. We eat our super meal for the speed buff. And then we make our way over to the mines. Making my way to the mines. Got the obsidian edge in hand. I am down to do this. I am I'm nestled in. I got my drink. I'm good to go for the next four hours if need be. To well, maybe even more than four hours. I don't know. We'll see. When I start an earlier stream like this, sometimes I can I can go for even longer than I normally do. And if I need to do four, five, six hours of killing the same Shadow Bruce over and over again, that's just what we're gonna do today. But I'm gonna hope that it's not gonna be like that. <laughs> Gotta have optimism, absolutely true. All right, we go to floor 85, we check it out, and we see one, perfect. Great start, very good start. Not the best start, because I mean, that could have just been the uh, the Shadow Spear right there. Also, I totally forgot to set up my my auto hotkey script that actually lets me increase the counter, so give me one second to go get that. Put Turn that on, that's very easy, I should go over. That should be good now, so I can should be able to just do a little boop, and that should increase it to 101 like that. 
There we go. Perfect. All right. Hello, Zombo. Welcome on in. Good to see you. Do you wear those clothes every day, says Haley. Why, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> on every single Groundhog's Day, we wear a new... We wear the exact same clothes because that's kind of how Groundhog's Day works. That would be weird if you're trapped in a Groundhog's Day loop. Imagine, imagine if Bill Murray in his Groundhog Day loop, like, not only did he remember, but, like, his clothes also showed, like, the wear and tear of the previous loops. He'd be, he'd, I don't know, he'd have to invest in some new, new clothing at a certain point, I would think. He had to change it up every, every single time. That would be, that would be awful. It's one of the benefits, I think, of being stuck in a time loop is that you never have to worry about, like, laundry. All right, uh, 85. Here we go. We go through the 85, the 95, and 105. 115 is not a great floor for Shadow Spirits, so I just go ahead and skip back to 85 at that point. There we go. I gotta turn down this music in my ears as well. Don't don't get me wrong. I love the volcano music, but. It's a little... It's it's kind of overwhelming my thoughts. My thought processes. Or never having to shower. Also very true. That's also a very nice but little bonus. Hey, Miss G, Thank you very much for becoming a, uh, a member at the Electron level for renewing your membership by the looks of it. I greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate the generosity and support. Thank you so much. Loosely quote your favorite quote from 2020. The probability of an iron bar is 50%. You either get it or you don't. That's just not how probability works, but you know what? I'm here for it. <laughs> I know a thing or two about how probability works. Have you seen me play the wheel at the Stardew Valley Fair? I think I feel like I've got it on lock. We've killed 102 Shadow Spirits now, so our odds of having gotten the 2% drop are about 2%. Because it's like 2% out of 100, and we've done 100, so like it's... That's just that's just math right there. Pretty sure. So we still got a long way to go. Although I think realistically, actually, like if I'm if I'm not memeing around here, the probability that we would have gotten the, the iron bar by this point is roughly 87, 88%, something like that. So we're we're on you know, we're on the wrong side of probability, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Like we like we got very, very lucky with our Dwarf Skull 3 from the Metalheads, and we're paying for it now. It's just the way life is. Has the green jelly been found recently? The green moonlight jelly? I don't believe so. I think it's only ever been two times that it's been spotted. Which lets me know that it does... It is spottable. Like, the code's not just broken. It does work, but uh, <laughs> it's just extraordinarily rare. Rebescapades, thank you for being a member for 13 months at the Electron level. Lucky number 13, you know it. Also, roguelike mod. If there's been an update to the roguelike mod, I would definitely love to play it. And even if there hasn't been, I mean, after seeing Wickedy stream of it, I well, I didn't watch her stream of it, but I saw that she did stream it. And I would like to... I, I wouldn't mind going back to it, see if my skills are... I mean, I'm going to be rusty. That much is for certain. But I feel like I could, uh, I could still make a comeback there. Keep up the good work immediately falls asleep. Thank you, Poyle, for coming on in, at least to say that much. I hope you enjoy your nap or your or your sleep. Maybe it's more than just a nap. Maybe it's your actual circadian rhythm eight-hour cycle kicking in. So I was talking about the wildfire smoke earlier. For those who don't know, there are like a lot of wildfires right now going on in Alberta and BC. It's like, it sounds scary, and I mean it is, especially if you look close to the wildfires, which thankfully I don't. But it is um, it is kind of par for the course this time of year. Like, the wildfires this year are a lot worse than they have been in previous years, or at least for the past couple of years. Um, but we still get a lot of the smoke down here. And the other day, it was I was literally like, um, I think it was Tuesday. It was like the day after the previous stream. I went out to do some some errands early in the day. And that was the first that was the first day that the wildfire smoke got really bad around here. Like it was extremely thick. Like it basically looks like fog more than smoke. Like it's just like a dirty fog. So you can barely see past like, you know, a hundred meters ahead of you, if that. 
Um, and so I went out for my, to do my errands. It was it was I just did my thing. And then when I came home, when I got back to my my apartment complex where I live, there was a fire truck there. And there were like, and everyone live, who lived in the building was like standing outside, just like meandering about. And I was like, oh my God, is there an actual like fire? Is like, what's going on here? But no, it was just that the wildfire smoke had gotten so bad that it set off the fire alarms in our building. And we had to be like, uh, and everyone had to be like evacuated just in case until they like came and like sorted that all out. But that was like, that was, that was, I've never seen that before. Like, I, we've had some smoky summers before, don't get me wrong, but that's the first time that I can recall wildfire smoke setting off a fire alarm in my building. That was, that was, that was kind of a wake-up call that was like, oh my gosh, this is like, <laughs> this is pretty rough this time, huh? But, thankfully, it was all, uh, there, there were no actual fires in my vicinity. Excuse me, sir, sir. Okay, just a little bit of coal. Canada's supposed to be cold. Only certain parts of Canada. I mean, like, most of Canada is probably covered in snow and ice. But also, most of that large part of Canada is largely uninhabited. There's a decent chunk of Canada that is relatively warm. At least during the uh, during the summer months. We do need the iron bar for the community center. That's, that's the whole goal right now. Get the iron bar to complete the blacksmith's bundle. And get the... Number one, I think that actually completes the... Um, the entire boiler room, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the last one we have to do for the boiler room, because we already have the copper and gold bars, so we just need this iron bar. And then, so that'll unlock minecarts for us, but it'll also unlock, more importantly, the furnace, since we can't craft our own furnace yet. That is the grand master plan, in so many words. One of your friends had to evacuate because of the fires recently? Don't think it was the smoke, though? Yeah, I mean, there there have been a lot of places that are being are being evacuated recently. My heart goes out to those folks who are who are being evacuated or who are living much closer to the fires than I am. It's a very scary time, and I am thankful and grateful to be in a position where I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, we've gotten the the copper bar and the gold bar both from garbage cans. The copper bar was really the uh, the extremely lucky one because it's not really available from any other other sources. Now now I could get one from a uh, a void spirit like this if I had to. But number one, that would be 15 combat experience that I don't want to intake if I don't have to. And uh, number two, I don't have to worry about it because I got it from the garbage cans anyway, which was extremely lucky. The gold bar I could have gotten from tilling in the mines in certain areas, so that wouldn't have been as big of a deal. Or, as someone noted in the Discord, I could have completed the Enchanter's Bundle and gotten five golden bars out of it. Although doing that is its own task with, with the rabbit's foot and whatnot, but technically possible. What was there after the first a first uh, hour on the first on VOD from Monday? Um, honestly, I don't remember. It all kind of blurs together for me. If you ask what happened in one particular stream, I am... I mean, unless it was a very pivotal event or a pivotal stream, I am not inclined to always remember because it is just, like, one continuous thing in my brain. Oh, I also forgot to update the exclamation point playtime. That's my bad. I need to get in the habit of doing that again. I used to be really good about that. I would just, like, go after the stream and immediately update the playtime, but uh, I've fallen behind on that lately. It was more of this. I mean, this was basically like the last like hour and a half, I want to say, of the the previous stream. We were doing other stuff before that. What were we doing? I mean, we did the Winter Forge thing. Got a lot of money out of that. Did a lot of debris clearing. It was made. It was basically a lot of maintenance, which comes with the with the start of a new year. We planted our grass starters and stuff. Just taking care of business, making sure the farm isn't just going to become a total rock farm only like mostly a rock farm or like 80% of a rock farm right now and then then the other 20% is what we got to work with There was a skull caverns run you're not wrong actually I forgot about that cuz we got another we got our fourth crystallarian out of that right this guy right here 
I mean, the Crystalariums, they're, they're a dime a dozen now, apparently. They're not even that hard to get anymore. They're just a little Skull Cavern spelunking and you're good to go. And with every Crystalarium, the Skull Cavern runs come faster and faster, if he, even if only a little bit faster. We have, have we ever learned, like, what this is? Is there, like, this is not a creature that exists in Stardew Valley. It looks like a Tanuki to me, which I guess could be, is the Trash Bear a Tanuki, the guy that appears in, like, the year three, who is, I guess, there now, because it is year three here, um, which also reminds me, I don't think I've updated exclamation point year yet, but I want to say he's a Tanuki, but he's also, I, I just call him the Trash Bear, and he looks more, he looks more bear-like than Tanuki-like, but I could be mistaken. I don't really know Tanukis. Current in-game year one. I should probably fix that. Let me let me actually update that like right now. That's easy enough to fix. Nightbot. I'm just gonna go to the Nightbot dashboard rather than trying to fiddle with editing the commands in uh, in the chat. Just easier for my brain right now. Exclamation point year. Current in-game year three. Perfect. Submit. Got it. Good. We're all on the same page now. Perfect. Wonder if luck affects the dro bar drop chance? It shouldn't. It should just be a flat 2% from, from monsters. I believe, anyway. Did I, not, did I press my hotkey to update the, the count last time, or did I miss one? I might have missed one when I did the command update, but I'm not positive. You thought it was a cyclops? What the the guy on the statue or the or the trash bear? Because <laughs> because one of those I can assure you is not a cyclops. I'm pretty sure it's got two eyes. Looks like an Ewok on the statue. This guy here. I see what you mean. That's an that is a cyclops, dude. That kind of looks like one eye. I always thought that was like maybe like the mouth and like these were like the eyes and it's like looking up. Or maybe even these are the eyes, and it's some kind of like weird frog or bird or something. I don't know. There's many ways you can interpret that statue. I'm, I'm realizing now. I didn't. I did not see the cyclops, nor would I have seen the cyclops were it not pointed out to me. But I totally see that now. Oh, I think I saw the. I saw a void spear at the last second. There, I saw his arms hunched behind my energy bar. That's okay. There's more void spirits where he came from. You always thought it was the dwarf. I'll have to look again. I don't, it didn't. It didn't bear much of a resemblance to the dwarf, from what I could tell. But uh, maybe I just need the right perspective. Excuse me. Stay, metalhead, I do not need you right now. There we go. Okay. Oh, hello. What do we got? It's Vincent! Vincent, everybody's favorite uh, prank caller, but it's not a prank call, it's just a wholesome call. Dot, dot, dot. Do you have any piggies on your farm? No, I don't have any piggies yet, Vincent. Maybe next time. Maybe next time you call. <laughs> oh, it puts a smile on my face. Just the innocence of a child calling to ask if you got piggies on your farm <laughs> at, the, at the bright and early bushy-tailed 6 a.m. You'll love to see it. If there's two plus shadow monsters, you should kill them all. Wouldn't a complete a you wouldn't complete a combat level, but you'd finish this task sooner. I understand the rationale there, Jerry. But if I need to get uh, if I need to do this like in the future for other goals, like get rare drops from monsters, I want as much leeway and combat experience as I can get. And the way to do that is is just kill one. It'll make it take a little bit longer, but I think in the in the grand scheme of things is going to be... we're going to be better off. It might not matter at all in the future. Like, it might just be that, um... It might be that I never need to do this sort of thing again. My, ne man, my next goal might be, you know, level up in combat, and then all this is, like, fruitless, but we can't know that until we actually get there. So for now, this is the life we live. Oh! 
There's no way. Could it could it be back to back piggy calls? Come on. Ew! No, get him off the screen. No, I stop it. At least you know what? I'll take the Pierre call over the Robo call. Although the Robo call is at least you know somewhat novel. Pierre, I can just go and like talk to, but I don't because like he's Pierre. Get him off my screen. <laughs> I don't even know what he was asking about. He was probably asking me to go spend more money at his store. <laughs> I, I, I literally spent like thousands of dollars just the other day, Pierre, to buy grass starters. Pierre, unless you got piggies for me, like don't talk to me, okay? Unless you're gonna, gonna build me a farm with some piggies so Vincent can be happy. I don't, I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna see it, I don't wanna hear it. And I won't take any other response. What a thing to wake up to. <laughs> the only reason you even chop up here is because you don't like Joja. And you know, yeah, less, lesser of two evils, I suppose. I mean, Pierre, he is, uh, he is greedy to a certain extent, but he's not as greedy as like Morris and Joja as, as like, a whole corporate entity. He is still a small business owner at the end of the day, small local business or owner, and we love to support local. Why you want to go to your local farmer's market rather than rather than Walmart if you can get the chance. But my, my life hack is I don't go to either because I, I don't buy enough like fruit, r fresh fruits and veggies. I should buy more fresh fruits and veggies. I'm starting to try and be more healthy um, because I'm realizing now that, you know, I'm 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 28. I'm getting so old now. I gotta take care of myself. My metabolism is, like, extremely great. Oh, hey, a copper bar. <laughs> Wrong color bar, but thanks anyway, game. I'm very I'm very thankful to have a good metabolism so that I, I've been able to eat pretty, like, unhealthily for most of my life and been okay, but I'm starting to realize, you know, that's not gonna last forever. I gotta... I gotta... I gotta get back on the bicycle. Proverbial or literal. So I've been, you know, the past little bit, I've been getting back into exercising every so often. I used to, here's the thing, here's the trap that I fell into, is that, because I've exercised in the past, I've been like, I've been off and on with like exercising throughout the uh, past few years even, I want to say. And every single time, I'm like, I want to exercise at least, you know, once once a day kind of thing. You know, make it, make it a daily habit, which is a good goal to strive for, don't get me wrong. But... I'm the type of person that, like, if I tr want to do something daily and then I miss a single day, I feel so bad about it afterwards that, like, I just, like, completely lose lose track of any progress that I'm making and I just, like, let it fall by the wayside. And, uh, so, so this time I'm taking it with a new approach, a new mental approach, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to exercise, like, more days than not in the week. So, like, four out of three, four out of seven days in a week, if I can pull that off which is a much more, like, attainable, realistic goal to start off with, then I think I'll be happy. And it gives me some leeway to be, you know, respectful to myself and to not treat myself so harshly if I do happen to, like, miss some miss some time. And I think it's, uh, I think it's working out better that way. Can I please try rubbing my lucky fairy stone on pie next time? Maybe this will get me even more luck. I mean... It's star shards. Technically, it's not a fairy stone, but I get where you're coming from. Also, I don't know if I would recommend rubbing this on any animal. <laughs> it looks a little sharp. I guess if you, you know, you know, you situate it right and you rub the uh, and you rub like the the flat edges against against Pi, then that could be okay. Also, Pi is like a pretty big trooper, so he's kind of like immortal, like Tim Beeb, so like everybody is in this in this universe somehow. You want to eat healthier, but you can't afford it. Yeah, that's the other barrier to entry a lot of the time, is that eating unhealthily is so much more convenient and cheaper most of the time than, than eating healthy foods. I feel like in today's modern age, um, healthy options are more readily available than they have been in the past, but it's still a, it's still a barrier to entry, no doubt. Developing an actual new daily habit takes time and usually a few tries. 
it's fall fall off the horse get back on kind of thing yeah and i've i've fallen off the horse enough times now that i'm like you know enough's enough and we'll we'll try it and maybe i'll fall off the horse again i don't know it's just you know it's just part of life i'm far from the per first person to fail at uh, developing a habit to exercise and i'm i'm sure i won't be the last either Not sure that you get the animosity against Pierre. Not only is he a small grocer in the community, but he's forced to directly compete with a chain. Who'd be likable after that? I mean, I get where you're coming from, and I want to give Pierre some leeway, like, based on that. But also, like, every single time you talk to the guy, nine times out of ten, he's going to be talking about money and trying to get you to spend more at a shop. And I'm like, you know what? I, I get that he's running a small business, and I get that he's he's has to compete hard and... And it's like, it's not going to be easy for him to compete against Joja. But, like, it's his whole personality. <laughs> and I'm not here for that. I feel, I feel like he needs more to himself. Like, there's there's nothing about Pierre that I know other than that, A, he's a, he's a businessman. He's a local businessman. And B, he likes fried calamari. I don't know anything else about the dude. <laughs> he has a secret stash in his bedroom of what I don't know. But he he has one, and I guess he was like a boxer at some point, and maybe he sings opera sometimes. Maybe I do know more about Pierre than I thought, because I, there are some little tidbits of dialogue. But like ninety percent of him is like I'm just a, I'm just a man who likes money. He also takes credit for stuff you sell him. I mean, to an extent, that's fair. I think if you, if you sell it to him, it is his property at that point. It's not, I don't know, does he ever actually say, like, I grew this? Because that's kind of like messed up if he does, but, you know. He, he can label it Pierre's Prime Produce if you sell it to him. It's, you know, that's just how the, that's just how capitalism works, like it or not, unfortunately. You can always just sell through the shipping bin, and then, and then you can keep all the credits that way, but, uh. But if you're selling directly to Pierre, you gotta, you gotta expect some kind of a markup there. Develop him so much in your Pierre and Caroline fanfic where they agree to get a divorce. I haven't read any Stardew Valley fanfics. I haven't read like any fanfics in a very long time. I used I used to be big into like the the My Little Pony fanfic scene, but I just don't have time for that kind of stuff uh, these days most of the time. But I can see some some Stardew fanfics being quite good. It's a very you know robust world. It's ripe for for seeding with little little fanfic story ideas. I think that could be fun. See you in a bit there, Jerry. Say hi to the kiddos. Pierre also enjoys sci-fi. That I did not know. Is there is there a secret hidden dialogue option where he he admits to liking sci-fi? I'm not I'm not sure where that one comes from, but I trust you implicitly. Because like, why would you lie about something like that? Fimfic for the win, for real, like. I've never really frequented other fanfiction websites like fanfic.net or Wattpad or AO3 or any of the other ones that are like uh, more prolific. Fimfic was like the it's like its own centralized hub for for those My Little Pony fanfiction stories, and the format of that is like so good. They did they did it so right. I don't know how it is now. I haven't been there in like in like years, but <laughs> when I compared it to when I compare it to like other fan fiction repositories it's like night and day it's like fimfic is like you know triple s tier and like the next high the next closest one is like c tier <laughs> it's like it's unreal the difference at least for at least in my opinion you learn pierre loves sci-fi when you take him to see wombus in theater it's the only movie that he loves is wombus a sci-fi for some reason, I thought Wombus was like a fantasy or something. I thought Wombus was like a... You know what, maybe it is sci-fi now that I think about it, because I guess I kind of equate Wombus to Flubber. But Wombus is like an actual alien or something, right? What's the true lore of Wombus? I know he's from like a a comic that Concerned Ape used to make, like way back in the day before he did anything Stardew related. I'm pretty sure that's... I, I remember seeing that in like a, uh, like a Shawnee Do short, I think. So that's cool. I think Wombus and Jojo is that is that the other guy or no Bobo Bobo. He's he's the pink one, right? He's he's the Luigi to Wombus's Mario. Yeah, 
you accidentally hit a bug, died, and you were like, oh, well, it's just one XP or something, but then you level up, so now so now you cheated. Um, Carmen, if you are, if you're playing, like, on PC, and you can access, like, your save files, then you could probably, like, load the back, the automatic backup save, and revert that level up, if that's one way you're, you're willing to go about it. Otherwise, I mean, reset if it's, if it's truly in your heart of, in your heart of hearts. Like, like, start, like, start over if that's what you feel, like, is right for you, but, uh, if it feels like it's not the right, if it feels like you're gonna have less fun doing it that way, then, then don't worry about it. Remember the copper axe of wellness. You, you gotta, sometimes you gotta take those mistakes and those losses on the chin just to, you know, feel okay and not feel like, <laughs> not, not be so hard on yourself at the end of the day. Playing on Switch. So yeah, there's no there's no way to revert the save then. I would I would personally say if you've invested a, a significant amount of time into your challenge, at that point, don't worry about it too much. Um, but if it would feel like if you feel like you would get to the end of the challenge and always look back on that and be like, oh, I don't really I'm not really a fan of that, then then maybe start over. But that's a call, call only really you can make. Yeah, if it's an accident anyway, it's like not that big of a deal. Wombus is an alien from a different planet. What planet is Wombus from? Is that is that a Stardew? If if that's mentioned in the Wombus movie, that could be a good like Stardew trivia question or something. Put that in my pocket for the next Stardew Valley Jeopardy. Which which planet does Wombus come from? I feel like not a single person knows that without actually like looking it up though. Except maybe Concerned Ape himself. Do you think Concerned Ape would win like a Stardew Valley themed game show? Like if he, if he were a contestant in like a Stardew Jeopardy style, style, style setting, do you think he would be like no like the no contest winner? Do you think he has, he, like, made, like, obviously he made the game, he knows, like, a lot about it, but do you think he, like, contains all that knowledge in his brain? Do you think it, do you think it's, like, still in there and, like, every little bit of it, even, like, all the little niche details he added are, like, they're still buried in there somewhere? You think he, you think he would? I think there are some people who give him a run for his money. Like, you know, you put, a uh, like, you take, you take, like, a ga Stardew game show, Concerned Ape, Pabu, and Blade. That's a game show I would watch. That that would be a very very <laughs> interesting assortment of uh, of individuals. That would be you know because they, they all have uh, they all they're all obviously all extremely knowledgeable about the game, but a lot of them in like different respects, like in different ways. Like their knowledge doesn't completely overlap in in every way but it so it'd be it would be interesting to see all the questions are non-canon valid valid also hello wickety welcome on in good to see you Yeah, your first bad sunburn of the year despite wearing 50 plus sunscreen. Oh no. <laughs> Here's my secret to not getting sunburn. Uh don't go outside. If it, if the sun is in the sky, I'm hiding inside. It, does, it doesn't quite rhyme, but you know, it is good enough for me. And if you do have to go outside, heaven forbid, just do it in little short like 5 minute bursts at a time. I do like to go for walks every now and again. That's part of my new, like, healthy lifestyle regimen that I want to get into. I try to go for walks every so often. But instead of... I don't go for walks when the sun is up. I wait for the sun to go down, and then I go for walks. It's nice and nice and a bit cooler. And it's just nice for me. Plus, there's, like, less of a chance that I'll run into people. And I just don't like, you know, running into people when I'm out in a bed. I like, I like to have my alone time when I'm on, when I'm on a walk like that. That is, uh, that is my platonic ideal. Kaylin, thank you for the $5 super chat, by the way. Greatly appreciate it. Finally get to catch a live stream. Love your content so much. Thank you so much. 
I greatly appreciate the kind words and support. Outside is where the frogs are. Get a pet frog. Problem solved. The sun is a deadly laser. I gotta rewatch that. Speaking of rewatch, I'm still on my my Breaking Bad rewatch. I just finished season three, and I don't know how how this works, but like I'm watching it and like, and then I like go to YouTube and I just keep getting recommended like Breaking Bad clips. And it's like, how does it know? Like, I'm watching it over on Netflix on an entirely different device than I'm per perusing YouTube on. It's all so interconnected that I, it somehow still knows that I'm that I'm rewatching Breaking Bad. And it's like, here's all the clips from like the future episodes that you're that you're looking forward to. And I'm like, I know, I'm look, I'm really looking forward to getting to see those in context. But like, come on, I want to see them in context. I don't want to spoil it too early right now. Same Wi-Fi. True, true. You know what? That's the common link right there. That's the that's the common thread. Chat, what's your what's your most uh what's the most heartbreaking scene in any like movie, show, story, like book, whatever whatever it might be? What's the most heartbreaking, like hard to watch scene for you? Because it's like so sad and heartbreaking. Because for me, like, it is, it probably is something from Breaking Bad. I'm not going to spoil it, because I don't want to spoil anything about Breaking Bad for anybody. But it's, uh, it's, it's, like, late into Season 5 in Breaking Bad. It's, like, it's a very, it's, it sticks in my mind forever. That one scene from Futurama, I don't know enough about Futurama to, to know, unfortunately. There's some shows that you don't watch because you got recommended so many clips on, on Facebook. It's like watching the whole show, but the TLDR version, the little Cliff Notes version of the show. Just watching the watching the clips. Dumbo train scene. I vaguely remember that one. And you know what? I mean, Dumbo in and of itself is a is a very tragic movie. Or at least the parts of it that I remember. Ending scene from the movie onward. The Lion King when Mufasa when Mufasa dies, yeah. That's uh I would cry at that every single time as a kid. I would probably still cry at it as an adult if I watched it, to be honest with you. Long live the king. That's a, that's 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 a, that's an all-time classic right there. The ending of the Walking Dead game. I mean, the Walking Dead is very beloved, but I've never I really know next to nothing about it. So I should uh, should definitely brush up on that and play that at some point. Not necessarily sad, but the entirety of everything, everywhere, all at once makes you so emotional. That has been on my, like, to-watch list for for a good few months now. Kept hearing people talking about it, and I'm like, okay, I gotta put that on my on my watch list and, and see that one eventually. I know that it gets you, like, so emotional like that. That's a, that's a high selling point for me. You just, like, knocked it up a few notches on my watch list right there. One Piece Rizo is safe. I, I believe that that is a I, be, I believe you when you say that that's like a heart wrenching hard to watch scene, but like One Piece is so hard for me to get into just because I know how much of a it's it's such a daunting <laughs> amount of like content. But if I were to get into it, oh hey some genie shoes. If only we could actually keep them. At least you know, get a nice little drip screenshot photo op. There you go. There's something there is something about like a really good like just like sad movie or like a like a sad moment in a movie or like an emotional like heartbreaking moment whether it's like a tragedy of a movie or if it's like a, if it ultimately has a happy ending or either way there's just something about that 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 gets me that's probably like my favorite moments that this like my favorite genre of moments in like any movie or fiction or anything like that is just like that moment that like rips your heart out of your chest and throws it to the ground and stomps on it in front of you. I don't know why. It's like, it doesn't make sense that those moments, like, are, like, some of my favorite. <laughs> I guess just because, like, the amount, the amount of emotion it makes you feel and it's like knowing that you're so invested in the story at that point. 
is a... Uh, I don't know. It's a good feeling. It's it's not a good feeling in the moment. I mean, you're like crying and like... You, I've, I've done my fair share of ugly cries to scenes like that. I would not want a camera on me when I'm watching some of those scenes, that's for sure. But... <laughs> But just the raw emotion of it is is unparalleled. He cried six times at the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Oh wow. I mean, I love I love the characters of Guardians of the Galaxy, so I'm I'm invested there. I feel like I might end up crying when I go to watch it too. Pixar movies kill you every time. Opening scene of Up. Opening scene. I was waiting for someone to say it. The opening scene of Up. The fact that it's like the opening scene and it can still get you so good is like extremely impressive by that. Because by that point, you're not really that invested in like what's going on. But they, they hook you so early and it's like it's just such a powerful sequence. It's very, it's very well done. Honestly, I don't remember that much about Up other than that, that sequence, so I don't know if that speaks to, you know, the rest of the movie. Maybe I just maybe I was just, like, too young when I watched it and didn't fully internalize it in my brain. Hey there, Arabella. Welcome on in. Still grind grinding Shadow Brutes? We are indeed. In fact, we're about to surpass the first threshold into 130 Shadow Brutes slain. Someone want to bring up the probability calculator? You know what, let me let me do it. Let me do it. I I because I can I should be able to get this set up. I kinda struggled with it last time, but let's see. Number of trials, 130. Probability, 2%. The chance of getting one or more drops in 130 kills is 92.77%. We are living in the 7.33 uh world right now. We are officially down below 10%. And we're going to keep on going. We're just going to keep going until we get there. 92%, huh? <laughs> oof, oof, oof. That one scene in Big Hero 6. Is Big Hero 6, is that a is, is that a Pixar movie? Is that a Disney movie? Or is that something else? I never, like, I've, I've heard about that one, and I've seen, like, I like anytime I hear that, I just picture, like, the big guy, like the, like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, but not. You know the one I'm talking about? Is he the, is he the big hero in Big Hero 6? Or I assume Big Hero 6 is because there are six big heroes. I don't, I don't really know. I know next to nothing about it. Hey, another copper bar, by the way. <laughs> Do you think, oh, we've gotten, like, three copper bar drops over the course of this grind. We could, like... Fuse them together into a single iron bar via the transmute crafting crafting recipe. Unfortunately, it's a crafting recipe, so no such luck. Avatar last air airbender tales of bossing say. It wouldn't have even crossed my mind until you brought it up. I haven't thought about Avatar in a long time, but it's. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of great moments in that show, and I mean, that one just sparks, you know, I just had like a, a thousand yard stare as I remembered leaves on the vine, or leaves from the vine, yeah. If we don't get it by 200 kills, though, then we go to 300 kills if we have to. 400, 500, it's, I mean, this is, this is life right now. This is, uh, I, I don't think you fully understand what you've gotten yourself into. Leaves from the vine, falling so slow, like fragile tiny shells. I, I, it, you know what, even just singing it, even singing like a small part of it, I just feel like tears starting to well up in my eyes. It is so, oh my gosh, it's so powerful. Uncle Iroh, man. In like every other episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> it's something different for everybody. I don't know anything I don't know much, much about Doctor Who, but like I've also I'm also a noted My Little Pony enjoyer. I haven't watched anything from it in like a few years, but back in during the like heyday of Friendship is Magic, I was all into that. And there's a good few episodes in there where I was I was I was crying for sure. Once you, once you get invested enough in the characters in the world, it doesn't matter, like, what necessarily, the, you know, the, the context or the content is. You just, like, 
you you accept it as its own form of reality and like you care about these characters and the things that happen to them and it's like and when bad things happen you you feel it it feels like a personal attack <laughs> heyday <laughs> what cuz hay is for horses you know i guess i did walk into that one a little bit what's the most heartwarming scene you remember to lift the vibes um the most heartwarming scene i remember Honestly, I mean, I'm so lost in the in the heart-wrenching scenes right now. And this this music is also, like, very sad. I mean, speaking of also heart-rending scenes, I know we're trying to go back to heartwarming. Um, but Mother 3. Oof. There's, there's, some, there's some powerful scenes in Mother 3 on its own. That's, uh... <laughs> if you've ever played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Heartwarming scenes, though. Heartwarming scenes don't stick with me as well as, as those heart heart wrenching scenes. They're just not as powerful. They're they're nice when they come around, don't get me wrong. I'm all for the little fuzzy warm feelings. And I think it's important to have them to offset it. Like you can't just have like, you know, heartbreaker after heartbreaker after heartbreaker or else like I'd never watch another movie again. I'd be I'd be dead after like the first two. If it was all just like tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy or or even worse than that, you become numb to the tragedy and it just like doesn't matter anymore. Which is definitely not a state that I ever want to get to. So those those nice warm fuzzy moments, even though I don't remember them as well, they are still just as important. Also, everything everywhere all at once is, is very heartwarming. It really the movie lives up to its title. It is everything everywhere all at once. Next, you're gonna tell me it's like really funny too. You cry at nice moments, too. I've been known to shed a few happy tears in my day. I'm, a, uh, am not much... I'm, I don't cry much in, like, my day-to-day -day life, but when it comes to, like, movies and TV shows, books, anything that I get, like, extremely emotionally invested in like that, I am... I'm a big blubbering baby. I, I am such... <laughs> I am... I am such a... Such a... Like, you, it's easy to jerk the tears from me, is all I'm gonna say. It does not take much. I'm trying to think of like any <laughs> like embarrassing examples of something I've cried at, but I mean, there's probably like, just about any movie that has like any emotional beat whatsoever, any any story that you can get invested in. I might tear up at. Doesn't matter how long it is. Doesn't like you could probably write a story in chat right now in 200 characters or less, and there's there's a chance that if you strung together the right words in the right order in the right pace. That you get me to cry. Also a sucker for a good song choice. It's true. I know it's like a cheat code to make you feel things, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It's like like a good the like a good song at the right moment can really just like bring a whole a whole scene together. It can uh, another copper bar. Does that chalk that up? That's three. Three copper bars today alone. Not to mention, I think we got one or two last time. Still no iron bar in sight. We haven't gotten any other bars, though, either, right? Like, we haven't gotten a gold bar or an iridium bar, so we haven't at least, you know, broken the odds quite like that. But still, that's a, that's a lot of copper bars to be thrown in my face. Maybe that's the si that's a sign that things are, are turning around. I'm gonna go... Like, uh, like someone suggested earlier, pet pie with the star shards. Maybe that's the extra luck we need. You got excited when you saw something other than the voids, than the void essence. It's true. I mean, any anytime you get any drop at all that's not like void essence or coal, it's like, ooh, that's novel. <laughs> that is humorous. Been rereading the Hunger Games and bawling your eyes out. I believe it. I've still only ever seen the first Hunger Games movie, but it's, um, it's a good movie. Would recommend. Can't speak to the sequels, but, uh, I remember, I remember Salmons was, was talking, talking highly about the sequels when he came into chat that one time. Hey, it's, <laughs> what the heck are the odds on that drop? A Strange Bun and Dwarf Scroll 4? I mean, that's gotta be, 
<laughs> I know that's rarer than an iron bar, I'll tell you that much for free. It's also not what we want to see, so we reset. That, that was just a whole little treasure trove we got from that guy. Welcome on in, Carlos. You have not missed much. You missed the slaying of 35 Shadow Brutes, and that's about it. And three copper bars, and a partridge in a pear tree. Anytime there's a scene in a movie where the lead character is sad because they lost someone, your dad starts crying, and you start crying, and your mom just sits there listening to her audiobooks. Well, that's a mood right there. That's a mood. But then what if your what if your mom's audiobook syncs up with an emotional moment at the same time, and she starts crying, but for like an entirely different reason? That would be a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? Catching Fire is even better than the original. Please go watch it. I don't remember where I heard. Like, I've heard in the past that, like, the sequels to The Hunger Games were, like, not good. And that's what, like, put me off from watching them for so long. I don't remember where I heard that or who said it. Maybe it was just one person's, like, bad take. But, like, maybe I respected the person enough because, like, I watched them as, like, a content creator or something. That's probably, like, where I would have seen something like that. But that's been a long time ago now, so I don't really remember where I got that information. But it is kind of, like, metastasized in my brain. Whoever said that, I will fight them. 0.004% chance of both dropping if they're independent. That is... That is <laughs> if that's truly the odds, then, uh, you know... Our luck rises in the strangest places from time to time. Why not get a mountain warp totem? Get You get them from the dirt? Because the odds of finding one are are low enough that I feel like I'm, I would waste more time looking for one. And like the amount of void spirits I could kill in that time, I might just get the iron bar anyway. So it's like, it's it would, it would save time in the long run. Especially, I mean, depends on how many I actually have to kill here. But sunk, fa sunk cost fallacy and all that. Also, hello, by the way, Karita. Don't know how long we've been here, but for some reason, I, this is my the first time I'm noticing your name right now. <laughs> all the Hunger Games movies are amazing. Didn't they just come out? Did they come out with a new movie or did they come out with like a trailer for the new Hunger Games movie? Like the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I think. Is that is that the next Hunger Games movie or is that like in the Hunger Games universe, but not like a Hunger Games movie? It's like a little, its own thing. I don't really know anything about it. First movie only scratches the surface. First movie is iconic, though. It's its, its own nice little, you know, self-contained story to a certain extent. But to know that they, they get better from there is uh is very good to know. It's Snow's story? A prequel. Ooh. Isn't Snow like the villain? Or is he like one of those villains who's not really a villain? Is he a sympathetic villain or is he like I mean I guess a villain can have a backstory too, and but like the fact that they're dedicating like a whole prequel to him tells me there's like more than meets the eye, like a transformer. To President Snow. How does a snake sing a ballad? You can't tell a snake what to do. It'll hiss the ballad. Because it's not the singing that you and I are used to doesn't make it any less less valid. I'm here for snakes on the next on the next American Idol. Open the audition to snakes, please. Start your own starty randomizer. First goal, goal is to craft a wood floor. Second goal, craft a weathered wood floor. On your quest to get the dwarf scrolls? Oh, I guess, yeah, you have to get the recipe for the weathered wood floor from the dwarf. Still, crafting a wood floor, underrated first goal, I would say. Because it lets you, you know, put floors around on your farm to help stymie the debris a little bit. It doesn't completely prevent debris, but I'm pretty sure it, it slows the spread of debris. Just based on, like, anecdotal experiments I've done. He's for sure a villain, but he's hot, though. <laughs> you know what? I mean, it's got, at least he's got something going for him, right? 
many good villains are hot, and that's how that's part of the reason that they're good villains because like they can use that they can use those that attractiveness to like lure people in, like sirens. Underrated element to a good villain. How hot are they? I feel like the hot. Yeah, if you're not if you're not a hot villain, you have to be you have to be much stronger than your average villain if you want to like be up to par with them. And if you're like insanely strong and hot, like if you're like Asmodeus, then like it's it's lights out. There's no there's no winning. There's no winning there. Is Asmodeus hot? I just want I just say that because like he's a devil. And he comes from like the like ninth ninth circle of hell or something like that. At least that's the like the D and D lore. So I assume because like devils are, aren't devils usually like attractive. You did not miss the bar, Artemis. No, we are we are still on that iron bar grind. You're stuck on catch a muscle right now. That's kind of a tough one, yeah. Life hack: you don't need a uh, you don't need a crab pot to catch a muscle. If you're playing on the beach farm, that's the caveat there, because you can catch you can catch I don't know if you can catch every crab pot fish. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure you can't catch like a crab specifically with the fishing rod, but there's a small chance to catch like many of the crab pot fish, mussels included. I'm pretty sure with a fishing rod on the beach farm. Don't know why that's like that, but it is it is technically possible. If you got your own absolute banger of a musical number, you become 10,000% better. Scar, Scar is calling. Scar from the Lion King. Absolutely true. He's in hell of a boss. Asmodeus is. Is it Asmodeus or is it Asmodeus? I've never been able to, to decide on a pronunciation for that name. Maybe that's by design. I don't know, but... Ooh, I thought I saw... Something down there. Like, I feel like Asmodeus is more rhythmic and lends itself better to being, like, an actual devil's name. But Asmodeus is, like, I think the first... Like, when I first saw that, that's, like, my initial instinct to pronounce it that way. Always said it like Asmodeus. The second pronunciation... Maybe it's because I'm conflating, like, like Asmodeus and Amadeus in my head. Because Amadeus is, like, something else. That's, like, that's like just, like, isn't is that, like, Mozart's first name? Amadeus Mozart? No, that's some, that's, it's someone's first name. It's, like, a composer. Like, Deus Ex Machina. Asmodeus. Asmodeus is closer to the Latin pronunciation. Ooh. Asmodeus, Asmodeus, Asmodeus. <laughs> His nickname is Ozzy in Hell of a Boss. Is he Australian? Confirmed. Hell is located in Australia. I mean, with the amount of, like, venomous creatures and, like, things that could kill you down there... It's, you know, it makes us it makes a strong contend contender for it. That said, I would still love to visit Australia. Nothing nothing but lo love for Australia and the whole of Oceania. But why you got so many like poisonous jellyfish and spiders and stuff? You guys should probably like sort that one out. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It's it's Mozart's middle name. How do I pronounce the wizard's name in Stardew, Val Stardew Valley? He, his name is uh, Rasmodius. I just call him Razzy, though. I'm quirky like that. Razzle Dazzle. Oceania? Is it not Oceania? Is it Oceania? Is it Oceania? Is it Oceania? There, there are many approaches you could take. 
I kind of like Oceania. Is that's like <laughs> it just sounds it sounds so wrong, but it feels so right. Oceania. Razzy Daddy. I don't feel comfortable having said that. But it's out there now. Anya was actually right the first time. Oce Oceania? I'm so confused. I'm lost in the pronunciation sauce right now. Worcestershire. Let's just <laughs> let's let's go back to Worcestershire. I know I'm pronouncing that one right. And sardoodledum. Underrated word, sardoodledum. Underrated and underutilized, I might add. There are so many words in like in the English language. And so many fun words that I feel like should be utilized more often than they are. Like every day I get an I get an email from dictionary.com telling me the word of the day. And every every single time, or most of the time that I see the word of the day, I'm like, oh I see this guy over here. Oh and right, this guy right here. I, I like look at it and I'm like, I want to start using that more, and then I like never do. I never remember what the words of the day are. Let me see, what's today's word of the day? I can actually just, like, find this out on my phone. Assuming I haven't scrolled too far past, uh, past it in my email. Today's word of the day is quidnunc. A person who is eager to know the latest news and gossip. That's not me. I'm so far behind on, uh, on, like, all news and all gossip. Especially gossip. Like, gossip... I'm not I'm not listening to those tabloids, no siree. I'm just call I'm anti quidnunk. That's not me. Isn't actually pronounced Wooster in a complete contravention of language. I've always said Worcestershire, and I've always been told that that is correct, but I think it's uh, I think there are cultural differences. Your challenge for today, chat: use use the word quidnunc in like a daily in your like daily conversation with somebody, and just do it like completely naturally. Just you just use it completely naturally, and you know try and get away with it. Because I've never heard the word quidnunc before right now, but I could see you could you could you could you know sprinkle it into a conversation if you steer the conversation in the right direction. Quidnunc in, in Latin translates to here now. That checks out. Do I say caramel or caramel? I, I usually say caramel. I, 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 I'm like a weird hybrid case. Caramel. I, def, I definitely try to emphasize, emphasize the second A. More than like a lot of people that I know. Because the second A, I mean, it's there for a reason. It's not silent. It's not like the GH in light. Which is still... I, I still am always... For, forever, that's one of those ones that always, like, throws me off. That Like, the GH in light is silent, but it's not silent. Because, like, if you take it out, then it's, like, lit. <laughs> it's just, like, a different word entirely. So, like, the light, it... It, it infers a different pronunci pronunciation on the I... So is that technically silent? Are those letters technically silent? They're not making the traditional GH sound. Or like any form of the GH sound, but like without them, it's a different word and it's com pronounced completely differently. So like obviously they're important. But like if you add in a second GH, is it, how do you pronounce it then? Liate? I think it was in a Vsauce video that I first saw that, and it's always forever stuck in my brain because I've I've never come to a a comfortable answer on that one. 
It's not silent. That's just how you pronounce the group together. So I G H in light specifically is that that's how that's just how that's pronounced. I guess you know that's that makes sense. What's up with hiccup? <laughs> Hiccough? Yeah, that's you know that's a you got me there. I got no defense for hiccup. Or for the hiccups as a as a concept. Why have we as a society not put all of our resources into curing the hiccups? They're so annoying. Is this too late in the night for me to get technical? Shania, I, I regret to inform you, it is 1.06 p.m. At least for me. <laughs> what do you mean, time zones? Just drink water? Sometimes that's, it is what you gotta do. Just take a, take a step back. Take a sip back, drink some water. You thought it was spelled H I C C U P? I think both I think both spellings are correct, but I think they're both still pronounced the same way. I definitely see uh like hiccup, like H I C C U P. I see that way more often because it's like it makes the most sense phonetically. But I'm pretty confident that, uh, like, replacing the C-U-P with the word cough is still acceptable. Because I've seen that before, for sure, and I've spelled it, and it, it like, doesn't, like, autocorrect it or anything. It's like donut and donut. Except, I mean, it's a, it's a bit more egregious than donut and donut, because, like, both of those, you can, you can make a, a reasonable case for how they're pronounced. This is a lot of slimes to try and manage at the same time as this dude. Worked out okay, though. Hiccup with the GH is apparently British. And see, in Canada, we got, like, a weird hybrid of, like, American English and British English. Like, there's, like, like I'm, I'm very used to seeing, like, flavor, color armor, all those with, like, the, uh, with the extra U in there that aren't typical, like, American English. And I'll type them up, and then, like, it'll be, and then, like, uh, Google Docs will underline it in red and be like, no, 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 this isn't right, and I right-click it, and it's like, you spell it C-O-L-O-R. There's no U in there, you silly goose. And I'm like, can I, can I change you to, to British English? I probably can, actually. You probably can change, like, the default settings. To accommodate for those little differences, because that's just the way I've always learned to spell those words. I'm not about to change now. Not that I have anything against spelling them without the U, it's just, you know, it feels wrong to me. Google, Google Docs is the enemy of Canadians. Some truer words have never been spoken. You bet money that in the next decade, though, will be spelled as T-H-O commonly, and the world will be better for it. I mean, our, we're already kind of living in that life. It's just not, like, formally accepted, but in in slang and, like, through text, that is, that is very common. But then, like, when do you start to draw the line? Like, is it okay to spell the word U, Y-O-U, with just the letter U instead? Will, will we eventually get to that point where, where that's, like in the dictionary or is that is that too far is that a step beyond what we're willing to accept as a as a society i would be i would honestly be like like i don't do that myself i usually spell out the word while you entirely no matter the context but i got nothing against using you just like the letter on its own especially because it does have like a precedent like i is like a single letter pronoun. Like, why wouldn't you be okay? <laughs> Don't make me pull a Weird Al and quote word crimes. <laughs> it's a great song. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, language is ever evolving.
you read a fanfic that used THO in narration and you took psychic damage. <laughs> yeah, that would hurt me too. I'm just so used to like to English in a certain way that you know, I'm I'm all for the evolution of language and change and all that. I understand that it's an important part of uh, of culture for language to evolve over time. But can it do it like after I'm gone? Can we just like leave language? Can we just like leave things normal as they are right now for me? And then once I'm gone, you can like do whatever you want. But until then, can you just like not change it, please? Because I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. Hold over from the days of character limits and chat messages. Even if there had never been character limits and chat messages, I feel like people would still default to like shorthand versions of, of certain words like U, B, R. Because like it's just like easier for a lot of people. Like it's like I don't use it myself because I feel like spelling out the words all the way, number one, doesn't take that much longer. Number two, it, I feel like it conveys a sense of respect for the person that I'm communicating with. But I realize that's my own idiosyncrasy, and that just because someone's hitting me with the single letter U's and not capitalizing anything or using any punctuation doesn't mean they don't respect me or my time or anything. It just means that, like, they don't care that much about it, and they're of the opinion that, you know, as long as they're communicating the message in a way that is legible and understandable, then what's the difference? And it's a hard argument to, it's, it's hard to make an argument against that that's not, like, pedantic by nature. That said, um, if you ever catch me using the letter U in place of the word U, unironically, um, it's time for me to retire. You have the opinion that most in an academic setting, following the grammar rules, follow the grammar rules, but if the reader can understand what's being said, then you don't care how it's said. Yeah, I mean that's the general, uh, I think that's the general main argument against it for like not having like fully grammatically correct text messages between like family and friends which is which works out pretty well for like 99% of the population I want to say. You know, maybe 99% is high, but at least like 90%. They respect their own time and is that such a bad thing? I feel like it's less common these days though now because like a lot of people now will use like text to speech for for the texting. They'll be like, "Hey Siri, text mom uh no, don't wait. Siri, don't actually. What do you. What do you have to say to mom? No, the, cancel. <laughs> Send it. Okay, thank you. See, as as per example, as per example. <laughs> Oops. Chat, did I get any of your series to text your mom? <laughs> Almost doxxed. <laughs> I see. I gotta think before I speak. Sometimes Siri, Siri's just like sitting right there, waiting for for a moment's notice to just pipe in. Does Siri make an appearance every stream? Not every stream, but Siri is like one of the only recurring non Stardew Valley characters of the stream. If you want to, if you want to classify Siri as a character, I suppose. Oh, what the heck? It's an iron bar. Yo, it just happened. <laughs> you're just in the middle of talking about Siri, talking about nonsense. 153 kills deep, and your iron bar will come when you're least expecting it. Oh, baby. There it is. A bar of pure, unadulterated iron. See, that's how you do it, Clint. None of your silver bars that you're displaying at the Sardi Valley Fair. I don't know where the heck you got those from or what you're doing, but iron bar, get me the heck out of here. Do not reset. 153 kills. Oh, that feels good. We made it. We made it. <laughs> Siri brought us luck in the end. Siri brought us luck. Oh, boy. I got to check the probability on this one. Also, Gray, thank you very much for the 1999 super chat donation thank you so much what the heck holy guacamole no one was expecting it it just it just slaps you upside the head out of the blue like that that's the way these these drops go 
an iron bar at least and we got it before we got like an iridium bar drop or a gold bar or anything like that so so we beat the odds in in some semblance let's see 153 that was a 95.45 percent chance to get it by that point so we, we were sub five percent we were living in the sub five percent world but at least we made it literally out of nowhere i mean that's just i mean it's gonna come when you least expect it every time that's just the that's the way it goes all right well let's go lock this in um i mean now we got now we got things to take care of. Now we have to number one. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, can I one second one second go here get rid of that. Oop. Say goodbye to the counter for now. 153 has a very specific property that you sadly don't remember. That's like the 95% confidence interval. End the poll. It was the most popular option as well. 131 to 160. 40% of chatters believed that that's where we would be. We were almost out of that bracket. But thankfully, thankfully we made it. Didn't have to make, go all the way to 200 kills. That would have been that would have been a tragedy. <laughs> all right. So, let's go do our trash run. I'm pretty sure we did a trash run at the start of this grind and there was something good out of the trash. I think it's a sunfish. Isn't there like a sunfish out of Jody's trash or something like that? Either way, we'll do the trash run just to be on the safe side so that we don't miss anything here. And then we will, I guess, go finish off the boiler room. I didn't think I'd be saying that this early on, but uh, I mean, I guess it has been almost an hour and a half of the stream, so that's, that's probably about average for the course. 153 is a triangular number, divisible by 9, divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 3, is it? Oh, no, it totally is. Yeah, I was I was adding it up wrong in my head. Yeah, but you're right, you're right. Divisible by 9 and 3, you're right. Pause for 2 seconds and you miss the iron bar. Imagine just pausing to... Because like, you got a... a call or a text or you got to go do something and then you tune back in and suddenly we got an iron bar in our inventory and we're we're scouring garbage cans there's the sunfish i thought so all right take this on home we got a void s instead of it too which is you know I, I can just buy those from krobus now that i'm thinking about it but still it's the thought that counts and what's our combat experience up to now we are at 21 combat experience out of 100 for our first level still got a lot of leeway to go there so we're we're doing all right. Be beautiful. All right, sell the maple seed. Do not sell the iron bar. Not to don't don't be a fool now. That would be that would be a mistake in more ways than one. More ways than I can count. All right, the jade goes in there. Sunfish goes in here. Void Essence, do we have... We definitely don't have Void Essence to stack. Oh, baby. Copper bar, gold bar. Do we take table gold, or we t do we just take the gold that's been sitting in the fridge, gathering, or losing its electrons? Table gold was our first gold. But, I, I mean, it's kind of become a fixture now. It's, it's kind of like... It feels, it feels wrong to remove it. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't necessarily live up to the legacy of table coal. But fridge gold, fridge cold, cold gold. And there's something to be said about it. A little cold gold. <laughs> also, my fridge is very full. That's okay. Well, I mean, we'll sort this out when we have to. Prehistoric rib. Oh, I gotta donate this prehistoric rib. You know what? I forgot that's why that's there. Might as well take that while I'm out and about doing errands. Let's go do it. Let the table gold stay on the table. I think it's earned the right. It's, you know, it's just, it's just a nice little decoration for now. We'll, we'll leave table gold alone. And pickle jar rag to top it all off. You'll love to see it. All right, I'm going to go donate this uh, this prehistoric rib first to the, to the dulcet tones of PJR. Then we will... Complete our first, we'll complete our second community room, community center room. Fantastic. 
Gold of any temperature would feel nice, I bet. Yeah, but cold gold especially? There's just something very refreshing about that, like rubbing it against your cheek. Ooh. Makes me feel all, like, tingly in my cheek. Ooh, new reward. What do we get there? We got ourselves a, the middle section of a sloth skeleton. We don't take that until we get the full sloth. I would feel bad just having, like, a, like a third of a sloth sitting out there. I've done it plenty of times in the past, but I feel bad every time. Classic PJR moment. Thank you, Haley. Thank you for blessing this moment with your with your musical presence. I feel all slow now. I feel so sluggish without my coffee and my my super meal running through me. All right. Let's do this. It's been a long time coming. Oh my gosh, this iron bar didn't think I would have it this soon, I'll tell you that for sure. But uh, here we are now. Blacksmith's bundle. Let's get this furnace. This opens up a whole world, a whole slew of possibilities, hitherto unknown. The furnace. The only furnace we're going to have for the foreseeable future. That is beautiful. You see how there's like a little like little face on the bottom of this furnace. You see it like smiling like that? Just like a little like robotic smile. I love it. There we go. Junimos, do your thing. This house was empty for years. The trees moved in and so did we. So true. Please restore the minecarts for me. <laughs> This isn't a bad song to go along with the to go along with the Junimos, honestly. Come on, buddy. Come on. Hurry your little Junimo legs as fast as they can go. There it is. Our second star. We get some star emojis in chat. Star emojis. Two stars. One third of the way down the community center. Whether we get all six stars remains to be seen, but that is nice progress. That feels good. Alright, well, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll take care of some of this while I see it here. Make our way home. Gather our mushrooms for the day. And lock this furnace in. We gotta put it... We gotta put it in a place of... Of worth, you know? We can't just throw our furnace around all willy-nilly. It's got to be somewhere important. It's got to be somewhere of note. I don't know necessarily where that is for the time being. Hard not to put f smiley faces on things when doing pixel art. I can see that. Hide a little smiley face in every pixel art you make. Load up on the mushies. Perfect. Second hootie. <laughs> Second hootie, the guardian of the furnace. Chat, what if I put the furnace, like, what if I just, like, leave it, like, right here? Do you think that's, do you think it's safe there? Do you think it's sa nice and safe there from, from debris spreading? <laughs> I don't even know if, if, it, if debris can destroy a furnace, but let's, you know, let's not take any kind of risks on that. Although maybe, I mean, it would feel pretty at home right here, right? Like it's it's right, it's just it kind of it kind of fits in nice there. It almost looks like a natural furnace spawn. It's just a natural furnace in and amongst the rocks. I kind of like it there. It's it's almost like it was meant to be there. Pretty sure it can. What's the matter? I I don't understand the problem. <laughs> All right, fine, fine. We'll put the furnace in like a, a normal, like boring place, or at least somewhere a little more. Like we can't really put it outside anywhere right now, because unless we like put it like, like here, <laughs> and block off our uh, our lightning rod, which I, I'm not a huge fan of. I can't put it anywhere like down on the ground because debris is liable to spread. What was the final number? 153. 153 Void Spirits. 513. If we just put it, you know, just nice and home. We got we, we got a nice little factory kind of going on here. 
anyway, so let's just add it to the factory. What do you got to say? You hear a robotic voice on the other end. Are you kidding me? I was I was so looking forward. I had the biggest smile on my face, waiting to hear from Vincent again about the piggies. One last thing to bless this day. And now you're telling me I have 10,000 a 10,000 gold Jojo rebate waiting for me. Well, what are we waiting for? Just send my credit card number to Ngunger Saint Zuzu. What the heck are you even talking about? Get me get me out of here. All right. Let's lock it in. You know what? Before we lock anything in, before we lock anything in, how about we do a little something something fun instead? We've been waiting so long for this furnace. We got some coal here. One piece of coal. And you know what else we have? We're hiding over here. Five little pieces of iridium from our stack of 14. Our first iridium bar is going to be made by our very own hands. Let's get that going. Buy the soup. Is there soup to buy? I bought the soup the other day. Yes, today's special is pink cake. I'm so used to seeing the answering machine, I didn't expect to see Gus's face. <laughs> FaceTiming him through the through the landline. DIY Iridium Bar. Only 19 more to go. You say that like it's a bad thing. Yo, minecarts. This will make getting around a little bit easier. A little bit better. We'll be able to get home faster after like a trash run. That's his own special reward. And five gold for the maple seed. No worries, Clawtooth. I think I noted it for a previous day. Not, not for this specific day. The Iridium Bar. Oh my. I thought they took longer to smelt than that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be ready so soon. One Iridium Bar down. 19 to go. Might as well get our second one smelted. We got, we got enough for one more bar here. Might as well smelt another one. I did sleep. I did sleep. You're not wrong. I slept for, for a considerable amount of time. I slept for like 13 hours there. Alright. Anything of note from the saloon today? Let's have a look here. Stuffing? I don't think stuffing is a, is a luck-based dish. How many? We're up to nine jades right now. Nine jades and three staircases. We've got a while to go before we can do another skull cavern run. Um, so the alternative, so like, what, what do we do now, right? We got our, we got the iron bar, we got ourselves a furnace. Next step for the desert obelisk, I mean, we got to get money and we got to get the iridium. The furnace is no good without the iridium ore, the smelt in it. So I think we're going geode farming. I, I hate to say it, I hate to do it live on stream, but like, it's kind of the only way to spend the time. Either that, or we sleep through the days to try and go Skull Cavern spelunking. But the geodes, I mean, I think we, I think we got, we got to go with the geodes. Coconuts, we will buy on on Monday at some point. We can buy them at any any relevant Monday that we go to the desert from Sandy. So I'm not worried about the coconuts, but uh, but the geodes, geodes, we're gonna have to work for. What do I still want out of trash cans? Fish of certain varieties would be nice, just for community center completion. And you know what? I mean, it's just it's just exciting to search the trash cans in general. Even if even if there's nothing super specific I want out of trash cans, I'm kind of hooked on them now. Know what I mean? I'm just hooked on the feeling of getting something cool out of a garbage can. And seeing how many how many garbage hats I can get. Watch an iron bar pop out of the trash today. It totally would. It totally would. That would just be just my freaking luck. And we need money, we need gollars, and we need iridium. Those are the two limiting factors right now, as far as uh as far as completing our second goal here. We need another 350,000 ish gollars. And ooh, stuffing. <laughs> Not a luck buff confirmed. It's a plus two defense. A little plus two defense. 15 copper ores. No thanks, Clint. Sorry. Horseradish would be nice. True. True. A little horseradish for the uh, for the foraging bundle. Yeah, forage for the foraging bundles and fish for the fishing bundles would all be appreciated from the garbage cans. 
That said, they're not super critical because we can always go JoJo if we really need to. Trash stuffing. Why is stuffing from the trash so much like grosser to me than like so many other things that we get out of the trash? I feel like stuffing just like it would like like the trash would adhere to the stuffing more than your usual food, if you know what I mean. It's like moist. There's like a whole bowl of stuffing covered in like like toenail clippings or something. I don't even know. <laughs> Oh, let's go get that artifact spot right there. It would soak up the trash juice. Trash juice. I mean, it's I hate it, but it is it is a real thing. Trash juice. The juice of the trash. We have minecarts now. You don't need to walk. Not even using your minecarts. Look, I just wanted to, you know, may I just, I just wanted to take the scenic route. Sue me. And I forgot, because, I mean, it's the first day the Minecraft have been available. But realistically, I mean, look at all this beautiful greenery we would miss out on if we took the if we took the minecarts. You want me to just go straight to the mines and expedite the process of, of farming geodes? We want we want to get geode farming that much faster? How you doing, homie? Just quick, quick, quick stopping with the homie. I'm not a spy sent by the shadow people, am I? I would be a very good spy, having having played such a long con to be your best friend. I don't, uh... <laughs> do you not trust me? Alright. Well, do we... So here, here's the question now. Do we farm Omni Geodes or Magma Geodes? Because Magma Geodes, I'm pretty sure, floor 115... Like, this is- this would be what farming magma geodes looks like. I'll just wait for it. Wait for it for a second. We gotta wait until we find the right rock. It's literally this rock right here. It's one rock right beside the elevator. There's- there's no other rock, like, that's beside it. It's not- it's not like a two-drop geode. So, that's nice and quick. Versus omni geode, which would be in this spot down here, next to the- next to that rock. Which is obviously a lot farther from the elevator. The, uh, the upshot of that is that Omni Geodes have a chance to drop Prismatic Shards. Which would be nice, but is it worth the extra amount of time and effort spent? I'm going to say probably not. I'm going to say probably Magma Geodes are, are the way forward here. Because they both have the same, they have, both have the same rates of Iridium Ore. They both have the same, uh... I mean, they both, they're both, like, profitable enough to, like, sell stuff back from. I think overall Magma Geodes are going to be the, the way to go here. Why not both? I mean, I guess I could do both, but... I guess I guess I could check both floors every single time, but that would be... I feel like that would just take overall longer, and I can't quite articulate why. Check both floors while I'm on it, so we would go, like, 95, and then we see one right there. I will need to clear something out here, so let's just eat this field snack. Yeah, I feel like both is, like, annoying to do. We do both, then we come back here, we go 115. I think Magma Geodes are the best way to do it overall, personally. Just, just for, not only for, like, efficiency's sake, but for, like, peace of mind. And like for ease of ease of access for me, because we're gonna be need to, needing to mine a lot of magma geodes here. And if I do it like this, I don't even ha I I have one hand on my mouse. I have no hands on the keyboard. I don't need my hands on the keyboard. I don't need to move. It's just it's just nice overall. Like this this is something you could like automate with a script if I really wanted to. But please mute the bell. I'm kind of I kind of like the bell. Maybe it's maybe it's something maybe it's like Stockholm syndrome adjacent, but I'm kind of here for the bell. But you know what? It's a, it's a pollable question. It's a pollable question. What the heck? Well, there was like a weird. <laughs> Sorry, there was something weird going on like on my leg for a second there. Start a poll. Mute the elevator. I'm just going to say mute the elevator bell. Yes or no. The dings, for, for me, they're kind of soothing. Not 
not silent, but quieter. It's it's a strong, strong, strong starting for no. Oh, wait, it, it went down to 50%. Oh, man. <laughs> this is going to be a contentious poll if I've ever seen one. Hey there, Lily Plumbridge. Thank you for being a member for 12 months at the Neutron level. Can't believe it's been one year. Didn't make the lot... Didn't make the lives off because of the time zone difference, but I'm an avid VOD watcher. I'm glad. I'm glad you've been enjoying the VODs and supporting Lily. I'm glad you're able to make it for uh, for a live one here to share your one year anniversary. Can we get some Argon love for Lily? Thank you so much for the support for the past year. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Quieter would be nice. We can do quieter. I'm not for, for muting entirely, but how about... That's too quiet for me. That's kind. Of, that's kind of nice. Is that is that okay? Maybe like a little louder, it's like a smidgen, like right there. How do we feel about that? Quieter is a good compromise. Louder bell, but do Omni Geodes too. If I were going maximum efficiency and weren't like you know trying trying to balance you know making content and entertaining and also like being kind enough to myself, then I would probably go with Omni Geodes as well as Magma Geodes. I would I would full sweat lord it and grind them both out. But for the sake of the stream and for the sake of my own mental well being, I think just going Magma Geodes is the way to go here. You were for muting, but now it's too low and weird. <laughs> There's no winning. There's no winning with these people. Either way, whether whether we have the bell muted or not, I hope you're ready. This is our life for the next little while. I'll probably do some of this off stream. We'll do we'll do a little magma geode farming off stream as well. I won't make it exclusively an on-stream activity because that would just be like insane. Especially given that uh, by like the average amount of iridium ore that you get per magma geode, we're going to need to open somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to 750 magma geodes to get the remaining iridium ore that we need. And we're currently at eight magma geodes, which is nine, nine magma geodes. I stand corrected, which is, you know, it's not bad. How much iridium ore do we have so far? We currently have two iridium bars that we just smelted. And we got four more ore on top of that. So we've got basically three iridium bars, which means we need 85 more um, ore. To get all 20 bars that we need. More than 1% done. Can we open them tomorrow morning? I think that could be a good way to do it. Like, if what if we, like, open the... Because, like, there's two ways in my mind that we could go about it. You're a savvy businessman and very pragmatic. And in my in my humble opinion, there are two options as I see them. Option A, you open all the magma geodes all at once once you've accumulated 700 plus. Option B, you open them daily and get a little bit of extra dopamine reward for opening them. I prefer option B. Hope you get craft tapper before sell sap because this is not a great grind. I mean, I got the sap to sell already. If I if I if I do get that, I got sap from a uh, from killing a slime on my farm at some point. I'm pretty sure. But if I if I have to sell like maple syrup before I get craft the tapper, then that could be a bit of a rough one. Yeah, we we got to go with the dopamine. I think. With the da daily supply of dopamine from, from opening the geodes, I think I'm here for that. Also, I'll be sure to sort out my inventory a bit better so that... Because basically all I'm going to need while I'm doing this is the pickaxe and the star shard. And, and some mushrooms to like restore energy. 
and then um, so I can clear out my inventory basically of everything else then that'll leave me a lot more room to actually open the geodes when when that does come to pass instead of having to you know juggle the stuff sell it back to Clint and yada 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 does resetting change the contents of geodes or is it fixed it is uh, fixed by the seed yeah so we can't we can't like reset the day and try for better iridium ore luck or anything like that from from the geodes that we do open regrettable as that it is What's the current grind for? We are currently grinding out Iridium Ore via Magma Geodes in order to... Basically, we got to get 85 more Iridium Ore to get up to 20 Iridium Bars, which is the amount of Iridium Bars we need to build the Desert Obelisk, which is our second goal. Yeah, that is, that is that's the main stumbling block right now. And once again, the mines proves why it's the best area in Stardew Valley. <laughs> Just think, think about how much grinding, how much of our time on this challenge so far has been spent in these mines. Either geode farming, killing monsters for, for their drops, just progressing through the mines on, on a Groundhog's Day style hell loop. It's been... This, this is basically just, you know mining simulator at this point who even remembers what it's like to to farm in this game it's all mining always has been is the quantity of iridium fixed or just the fact that there is whatever ore i'm pretty sure that the quantity of iridium is also fixed but that is probably worth testing if, if we get an opportune moment to test it like if there's a day where we get like iridium ore as our first drop from a geode then then that would probably be worth testing Not that it's that manipulable, because even if it is the case that it's not, like, a static uh, quantity, trying to reset for, like, the highest possible drop, which is, like, a, I think it's, like, a 1% chance of you getting, like, 11 iridium in a single drop. If you do happen to get iridium, I believe that's what the numbers were on the wiki, then, I mean, trying to reset for that is just, it, it, would, it would take more time than it's probably worth. Oh, don't miss that. Finally sent the email to your psych. Feel so anxious. Send send in loss of love and good feelings, Arabella. It'll all go well. Best of luck. Wishing you the best. Would resetting and opening a different variety of geodes instead change the outcome? So switch magma and omni geodes? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, they would have like... Here, here's Here is what... Because I've tested this in the past. I've opened a lot of geodes in the past to, like, test various things. And that includes testing, like, what comes out of which variety of geode. And the only real differences I've noted is when you open a geode and get an actual geode mineral out of it. So, like, if I open a, if I open a magma geode and get, like, a certain geode mineral, say we get, like, a, I don't know, Bixite out of it. Then we could open that if we were to, if that had been an Omni geode that we opened in that uh, pattern instead, then we would have gotten possibly a different geode mineral out of it. But if it's not a geode mineral, if it's a resource like an ore, like coal or copper ores or radium ores or whatever it might be, then it's consistent between the geodes that can give that drop. So whether it's an Omni geode or a Magma geode that we open, we would, all, we would get a radium ore no matter what. I believe that's how that works, if that if that makes any sense. I feel like I might have explained that poorly, but hopefully hopefully some semblance of it is is laced, laced with truth. So I don't think there's any benefit to switching between opening magma and omni geodes, but I could be wrong. Also I feel like I might want to save any omni geodes that I that I do get here. Or trading at the Desert Trader for like um, for Desert Warp Totems and stuff. I think that could be good. Although I guess in not too much longer we won't need Desert Warp Totems, will we? <laughs> All this hullabaloo about the the second goal being the Desert Obelisk. We neglect to remember that the Desert Obelisk is going to be kind of a nice quality of life upgrade in the end, right? Free, free and infinite access to the desert whenever we need it. Oh baby.
And all it costs is, you know, like 50 hours of our time. Checking the same piece of hardwood in the wood chipper that's not fixed. That that one is not fixed. That that one is is random um, every single time, as far as I know. Save them for treasure troves. That's true. Yeah, it's five, five Omni Geos per treasure trove. I remember that well from the Giftathon. That's probably a good way to go about it too. Who's the best character in Fallout New Vegas, and why is it Yes Man? I need to play more Fallout games. Chat, what's the best Fallout game? If I if I were completely brand new to the Fallout experience, which I basically am, like I own New Vegas, and I think I played it for like an hour one time, but don't really remember anything of it, so I'm basically starting fresh. Where do you point me? Am I going? Am I going Fallout New Vegas? Am I going Fallout Three? Fallout Four? Where where's the best starting point? Or Fallout One? Isn't Fallout One like from like the nineteen eighties or something? <laughs> Isn't Fallout One like a super old game and it's like a like a text adventure or something? Or am I thinking of something else? I know that like Grand Theft Auto is like a uh, like the like the original Grand Theft Auto is a very is a very different sort of beast than than the than the current modern incarnation of Grand Theft Auto. New Vegas. Best best one is New Vegas, hands down. Interesting, okay. Fallout 1 and 2 are isom isometric. Ooh, I like a good isometric game. Little Super Mario RPG vibes. I can get behind that. One and two are very different. They're top down. They're probably still fun though, right? Maybe, like, if you're looking for a certain kind of experience, they're not what you're looking for. Like, if you're looking for the traditional experience that I associate when I hear, like, the name Fallout, then, then probably not. But maybe? I don't know. Was the original Fallout was it just, like, on PC? Or, has like, has it always been a PC thing? Or did it start... Did it have its startings on like the Neo Geo or something like that? Some kind, of, some kind of weird origin story. I wouldn't be surprised. Welcome on in, Atlas. DOS, you believe? So, so bas basically PC, yeah. One and two are very fun, but they're very hard. Such is the way of the of those old games. I feel like the reason old games, like NES games and, and all of those from that sort of era, are they tend to be like a lot harder on average than than the modern than modern games. And there's probably like a lot of reasons for that. But I think one of the main reasons is honestly like for for like playtime. Like the purposes of playtime to make you play as long as possible so you like get the most bang for your buck. I don't I don't know. I don't like I feel like there's an, like, an element of truth to there is that like the longer you like throw yourself against the wall trying to be like the same level in contra or whatever you're getting more your brain thinks that you're getting more content out of the game than you actually are and you're like this game is great. And don't get me wrong, a lot of those games are great. But I feel like their their greatness is conflated by the amount of time and effort that it takes to like master them. If that makes sense. Early video games built on arcade experience where hard games were meant to meant, meant more money spent. That's you know what, there's there's absolutely an argument there. I guess maybe the argument is probably different when it comes to like home console games. When it comes to like difficult arcade games, the faster they can kill you, the more quarters they're squeezing out of those little those little toddlers. I was never an arcade goer as a kid, really. Mostly because I don't think there were any arcades in the uh, in the vicinity of where I lived when I was growing up. Like the odd time, I would go to like a, a movie theater, and there would be some arcade machines, and I get to play them while we're waiting for like the be like let into the theater or whatever. 
And even nowadays, like, I think there's still, like, a lot of arcade machines at movies. Just, like, out in the lobby and stuff. At least the ones that I've, uh, that I've seen. But I feel like I, I feel like I missed out on an experience there. I feel like I, I should have been an arcade kid, but I wasn't. It's like a missing puzzle piece, you know? Because I definitely remember, like, I've, like, the very t few times that I have played in an arcade, and actually at arcade games, I, th I think back on them very fondly. Remember that old, like, Simpsons fighting game? <laughs> I don't even know what it was called, just like the Simpsons arcade game. I have some, I have some very fond memories of that one. For the very short amount of time that I got to play it. There's an awesome video, YouTube video from a guy who traveled the IRL path to follow 1-2 in New Vegas. It's fascinating as well as informative and well narrated. Sounds like my ideal kind of video. I'll have to look into that. Probably probably interesting even for someone who hasn't played any of the follow games. Those sorts of videos tend to be. There's the amount of videos that I've watched on like topics that I know nothing about before actually going into the video. And still end up enjoying the video as like a video essay or whatever it might be. That's like, those are like my favorite kinds of videos to watch, honestly. If I like see something and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like they're, they're marketing it well. They've got a good title, a good thumbnail and a good concept that's intriguing to me. Usually it's something that I'm at least tangentially aware of or like, um, or that I, or that I can like relate it to something else in my life. Like the, the quintessential example is like any like video essay from like Sarah Zed or, um, like, strange aeons. I don't really, like... Or even, like, Jenny Nicholson, to a certain extent. Even though I know more about the stuff that Jenny Nicholson tends to talk about than, like... Than, uh... Than other, like... Video essay YouTube channels that I watch. But, like, they they present it in such a good format that it's, it's very fun to watch, even if you don't know what the heck they're talking about. Before you even go in. Apropos of nothing, should we take one of the chests to Clint? That's honestly not a bad, not a bad shout out. Take one of the chests to Clint to just store all the, all the stuff as we open up geodes. Although we can probably sell most of it just directly back to Clint, except I guess we can't really sell like the stone and the clay that we'll get out of geodes. But we can always sell that to Robin later if we want to, or just hold on to it. You love Jenny Nicholson? Jenny Nicholson is is still one of my go-to um, channels to watch when I when I like need like some background noise to fall asleep to. I'll turn on like one of her like like creepy pasta videos or something where she, it's not that she like reads creepy pastas, but she like I mean she kind of does, but like not really like verbatim like creepy pasta type channel, but she like goes over them and like talks about them. It sounds boring when I phrase it like that. I'm not doing a great job of, se of selling it, but trust me, she's great. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And yeah, she's like... It's just a very soothing comfort video for me. A lot of her videos are. Closest to an arcade where you lived was about 20 kilometers away. It was combined with a mini golf course, so there were only like three to four games, and one was always broken. Oh, there's there's something very nostalgia-inducing about that. Even though I'm I'm not, I never grew up with arcade games or mini golf, but like just the idea of that makes me feel nostalgic in a weird way. Anyone else get that? Where you get nostalgic for things that like you've never experienced before, but are just like old or like people speak speak of them in like a nostalgia with nostalgia laced language so like you feel it yourself it's like secondhand nostalgia i get that more often than i than i care to admit like i kind of get that when people are talking about like the 80s and stuff and like uh their experience like going to concerts in the 80s or, or with arcades in the 80s or various things like that I don't even know if it's really nostalgia or if it's just like empathy, <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a good feeling. Don't mind the staircase. Don't do not mind the elevator. I don't want it to break. 
imagine you hit the elevator one time with your pickaxe by mistake, and it's like, oh no, you destroyed the elevator. Better restart. Better restart the mines from, from floor zero. Sorry. The things that strange aeons makes you aware of are insane. <laughs> it's all the same, honestly. I have, I have a lot more uh, knowledge of, like, Tumblr related drama because of watching strange aeons than I than I would otherwise in my life. That's for sure. And I don't know how I feel about that what the, Why am I on floor 120 get me out of here? Oh, I got it. I got it. My hand was off the keyboard for so long and it felt weird to like move it back to the keyboard What are we doing right now we are currently farming magma geodes for iridium ore because we got ourselves the furnace from the blacksmith bundle. Now we actually got to get the ore to make use of it. Nostalgia is just a fondness for the past. It doesn't have to be a fondness for your past. Hey Siri. Uh -huh. What's the definition of nostalgia? Nostalgia means a sentimental longing or wistful affection for a period in the past. You're dang right. You got me dead to rights on that one. I thought it had to be a nostalgia for your past, but it's just a wistful... What'd she say? A wistful longing for something in the past? It's a great way to describe it. Wistful? Wistful is a great word. You were lurking and didn't see, didn't see until now. No worries, Bex. Welcome on in. Welcome to Bex and, and all the other Lurkers. You know what, for that matter, can we get some sevens and Lurk for, from the Lurkers? This is a good time because I'm not actually that preoccupied with much in the game, so... <laughs> this, is, this is the closest I get to Lurking in my own stream, is when we, when we do a grind like this. What are the Lurkers out there doing? You play you playing your own Stardew randomizer experience or playing a different video game? Maybe a little Tears of the Kingdom? Maybe you're doing some chores, maybe you're exercising, maybe you're just you're just vibing out. Whatever you might be doing. Let's see. Jess Jessica Aaron A, Clawtooth with the 3.5, Maggie, Purple, Kaylin, Ash Ashra, Emilio, Coffee Bean, Lid, Bex with the 07, Laura DeV. Frog legs because you're in your bi-weekly yes man obsession right now. Go off. Go off, King. Or Queen. Uh Audrey. Audrey's at oh, you're at work. Fair enough. Uh I'm trying to I'm trying to parse your name. C C M A and Mystic. Uh <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how how that seems like the right pronunciation. CMA and Mystic. Either way, welcome. Happy to see you lurking. Eeky deeky. Cobalt, Crimson, Kit Kat, Liz, Epsilon Aphrodite. We got lots of lurkers in here right now. I appreciate the lurkers. Lifeblood of the stream, a lot of you. Thank you for the support as always. Greatly appreciate it. Hope that you're enjoying your day, whatever that might be. And to the super lurkers, the ones who are lurking so hard and, and so deeply that you didn't even type a 7 right now. I see you too. Don't think I don't. And I appreciate you all the same. And to like the Omega Lurkers who are like, they heard me talk about the Super Lurkers and they're like, oh yeah, I mean, there are people like that, but that's not me. I'm like completely, I'm, I'm like on a ne next level of Lurkdom. And maybe they think that because you know what, maybe they're not even hearing this right now. Like they got the stream muted on a second monitor, hidden behind a, uh, hidden behind a curtain. They're so far lurking that they're not even paying attention to the stream anymore in any capacity. I still appreciate you. Hey there, Robert. Robert Driscoli, welcome on in. Searching for the living hat is not going well. One does not simply search for the living hat. The living hat is, is bestowed upon you when you least expect it. I feel like the majority of people who have gotten the living hat have just gotten it by, like, without ever even, like, looking for it. <laughs> it just, like, happens to come upon them. They'll just be, like, clearing fiber or whatever off their farm, and then it just, like, appears. And it's like, oh, hey, it's the living hat. 
How about that? You're like actually actively seeking out the living hat, despite like mathematically increasing your odds. It fe it makes it feel like it's so much longer because like you're you're looking for it specifically. All right, 50 geodes, 50 magma geodes in one day. Maybe that should be like our our quota, kind of like how we had the the quota of like a hundred of each. Um. Well, on I want to turn the sound back up here. We had a hunt. We had the quota of like a hundred of each winter forge on our winter forge days. Maybe fifty magma geodes in a day is a good place to call it quits. I think I'm okay with that. Also, I need to hydrate. You're a mega lurker. <laughs> I see you, Robert. I see you, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming out of mega lurkdom just just to let me know. All right, more cherry wine, please. Cherry wine on the hopper. Here's our second Iridium bar on deck. Okay, I want to clear my inventory a little bit. Let's go ahead and drop off. Let's just, let's have all the essentials for geode farming. So we don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. I mean, honestly, I kind of might want to keep the hoe just for any artifact spots that I happen to see while like trash hunting, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, keep all these. Um, Omni geode, don't need keep. I mean, I'll, I'll bring the Omni Geode. Well, no, we'll save the Omni Geode. We'll, we'll leave it as, like, a little a seed for a collection here. That way we can add more Omni Geodes to the fridge when we get them. How'd the Shadow Brute Massacre go? We got it after 153 Shadow Brutes, so it took a little while, but got there in the end. Alright, Star Shards, Mushrooms. We sell the stuffing. Sell the stuffing and we're good to go. Carry Kiss, Mega Lurker here as well. Thank you very much for making yourself known. Known quantity. Wouldn't it be more real-time efficient to sleep for more jades and staircases and then do Skull Cavern? Hard to say. <laughs> because, like, Skull Cavern, like, it's more exciting and it, fe it feels more efficient in certain ways, I'll give you that. But you gotta, you gotta think mathematically, how often are you getting an Iridium Bar from Skull Cavern? And an Iridium Bar equates to, like, five... Iridium ore from from geodes. I feel like the iridium's probably gonna come faster with the geodes, but it's it's kind of a toss up, honestly. When did the iridium bar happen? We got our first iridium bars this stream just from uh, from smelting them, and hopefully, if things go well today, we will smelt another and another and another. Well, no, there's no ends to the iridium. Super meal. Wait, super meal's good because that's a that's a speed buff. But we already have a lot of super meals from like crates on the from supply crates and stuff. I am going to take with me the iridium ore that I currently have, just as maybe like a good a bit of a good luck charm, bolster our star shards a little bit with some some adjacent iridium, and uh, yeah, and we'll then we'll have a nice little supply to add to while we're opening geodes here. Also end the end the elevator bell pull. We are going to open geodes. We're going to open our first 50 geodes today and then we will go back to the to the mines for more geodes. Let me start up a poll here as well, you know. How much iridium not erodium. That's that's a different material. Iridium. Or will we get from our geodes? Just from these geodes. We get, let's see. What what are some good options? What are some good thresholds? This is the first time doing this. Zero to What if what if we just do like zero to three? <laughs> I, I don't know how how frequent. Let me think. We're gonna go zero to three. I we'll we'll zero to ten is too big of a range. I feel like we're not gonna get ten out of our first fifty here, but I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna go zero zero to five. Zero to five. We'll do increments of five. Zero to five. Six to ten. Eleven to fifteen. Or sixteen plus. Someone vote sixteen plus for me! Exclamation point optimism.
And in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, ooh, I'll get this supply crate, number one. Two bombs out of the deal, not bad. Get some mushies. Zero to two, three to five, five to eight. I was thinking of going less, but you know what? We're, we're about the optimism around here. I might, you know, adjust the numbers depending on how this geode opening session goes here. But for now, you know what? I'm confident. I'm confident. We already paid our bad luck tax on the Shadow Brute grind to get the iron bar in the first place. So we're due some good luck. That's just that's just the way these things work. We're just due now. Not feeling optimistic today, Hol Holus. I'm going to hopefully bring you back around. Watch us get 11 Iridium Ore in our first 10 Geodes here. I'm, call I'm calling my shot now. We're going we're gonna to get the lucky 1%... It's, I mean, it's less than 1%. It's like 1% times the 5% chance at even getting Iridium in the first place. So it's even rarer than that, but we're going to get the Iridium or The 11 Iridium or drop, mark my words. 100 ores, could you imagine? <laughs> How many ores do we need in total for all the bars? I mean, in total, we needed 100, but we've already smelted... Um, two bars and we've got most of a third one here so we need 86 ores total we need we need this number to be 90 basically but i mean we're going to be smelting the iridium as we go so but we need 86 additional iridium ore in, in, in addition to what we got here all right first geode opening party can we get some, I don't know, pickaxe emojis? Pickaxe emojis for, for opening the geodes? Because there's definitely no geode emoji, but that's probably about the best we're going to get. All right. You know what? I want to I want to sort this out differently. I want to do it like that. That just makes me feel better. Perfect. All right. Starting off with some Bixite, nice and strong. Feel strong, man. How long until our first Iridium drop? Do you think we're going to get any Iridium in our in our first 50 Geodes here? We'll, we'll only see. Thank you for the pickaxes. The more pickaxes we get, the better our luck will be. That's just that's just facts. One Iridium ore acquired. Our very first Iridium ore, so we're at least better than, better than zero. We're off of the zero bracket. Well, we're not off the zero bracket. I don't have enough room in my inventory, says you. All right. Shop sell all this we basically just sell everything to clint at this point i think like we don't have any more minerals to get out of this i'll even sell like the other the ores that are not iridium and keep on going third bar and there's some coal as well the coal is nice for for smelting purposes obviously won't have to buy the coal we, we should get well more than enough coal out of just opening geodes that i won't have to worry about buying any for the actual purposes of smelting here. Did I not need to donate Bixite? Rip. <laughs> I mean, we'll get more. We'll, we'll get more Bixite. It's fine. It's fine. There's no way that we're going to get up to 90 Iridium ore before we get one more Bixite. It's just, that's just, that's, that's just silly. That would just be silly. Dolomite, Lemonstone, Bearite, Fire Opal. Perfect. And a partridge in a pear tree. Just honestly toss these. I'm not going to save them. I already got a lot of stone. I can get lots of lots of clay if I need it. Don't worry about it. We did get the iron bar, Mary. We got the iron bar. We got ourselves a furnace. Now we are in iridium grinding mode. Halfway through our supply of geodes for today. No signs of slowing down. Is that bit? No, that's not big. Say that's Neptune Knight. My bad. A lot of fire quartz today, and some clay. All right, fair. Shop me. Well, tiger's eye is not donatable. I th I think th I think big sight is actually the last thing we need out of uh. Out of a magma geode. I didn't even think about that. I was so laser focused on the iridium ore that, that the Bixite being a thing is like 
so far back in my brain now. And the B, B underscore boss dot OGG blesses these last few geodes here. You'll love to see it. I gotta, I gotta sell things and get back to the, get back, no, don't do that. Get back to opening the geodes before we, before the song ends here. It's a short song. We don't, we don't have time to waste. Buzz, buzz, baby, buzz, buzz. Antle, Antle, get, come on. I need, I need more iridium. More iridium. That's gold. That's not iridium. You fool. It's okay. It's fine. Even if, I mean, we got one iridium ore <laughs> out of this. I think we're probably going to have to adjust our... We're going to have to adjust our brackets for next pull. Is what this is telling me right now. But now we know. This is, this is a learning process, as everything in this challenge is. Nope. Wrong thing. Just gotta get in the habit of doing that. Too bad I can't befriend Sam with all those tiger's eyes. Star shards. We got lucky, more lucky star shards. I'm gonna start a start a star shards collection. I think. Why not? We the, one star shard is already lucky. Two shards star, star shards got to be double lucky, right? A thousand dollars is pretty tempting, though. <laughs> all right, sell, sell, sell. And we're good. All right, well, that's one Iridium Ore. We got a single Iridium Ore out of 50 Omni Geodes. Or sorry, out of 50 Magma Geodes. You know, not the best. But better than zero. Better than zero. All right, I'm on my way. Off to the mines with us. And let's amass more um, Magma Geodes here. Also, before I forget, lower the sounds right about right about there. It's fine. Only eighty-five, only eighty-five magma geodes to go. Look, why look so far forward at such a daunting task when we can look back at how far we've come? We can say, "Oh my gosh, we got eighty-five iridium more to go, and we only got one out of fifty geodes." How long are we gonna be here? Or we can be like. Yo, we already have three iridium bars. We are well on our way to our to our goal there. Three iridium bars is three more than we had yesterday. It'll get better. It'll it'll get better. We have nowhere to go but up from here. We have nowhere to go from up. We're gonna get at least at least two iridium more next time. And if we double the amount of iridium more we get every single time. We should we should be we should be there before we know it, right? We should be there in like no time flat. Beats pan beats panning for it. That's true. I mean <laughs> if there if there's one grind that would be rougher than than this for getting iridium more, it would be panning for iridium more. Only 4,200 plus geodes to farm. Maybe my numbers were off. Because I, I did, like, the probability of, like, average iridium ore per geode. And I landed around 700 to 750 geodes needed. But maybe my math was off. Hopefully not that far off. But <laughs> yeah, I guess going by just the number that we got here, 1 out of 50, 1 in 50 geodes, then, yeah, I mean, that we were definitely on the low end of the average there. But what else is new? We've been on the low end of the average all stream. Our luck will come around. With a sufficiently large sample size, our luck will come back. Don't you worry about it. Look at that fool trapped over there. He probably has an iron bar and everything. Hmm. Be me, get excited about a single rock next to the elevator. Do not get excited at all in the slightest about that diamond note over there. Just Beatrix things. Is there a tracker in game that tells you how many geos you've opened? Is that something that you that is like in the stats for um 
on like that machine at the casino you know the one that like tracks like steps taken and stuff is that a stat because i would love to see that when when everything's said and done because i feel like we're gonna have opened like a lot of geodes <laughs> by the time this challenge is over If you had to put a number to it right now, put it, put a guess, not just for like this goal, but for the challenge as a whole, how many geodes do you think will have opened by the end of it? Because geodes, I mean, they might not be, they might not be a forever thing. They might not be a mainstay for the entirety of the challenge. But for this first part, it's pretty clear to me that they're a, uh, <laughs> they're a pivotal, important part. Beatrix is laser focused. So true. Your account is in the save file, but it doesn't doesn't show up in the game anywhere. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I can go digging through the save file. If, it, if it's in the save file and it's being tracked, which I guess it would have to be in order to for the geode logic to even like make sense, then then I can find it. We have the technology. the rate of one iridium more for fi per 50 geodes it's over 4000 more geodes i think i think our rates are low i think our rates are low right now but we will we'll get there we'll get there in the end it's all going to even out like we got fifth we got one iridium more in that first 50 geodes in the next 50 geodes we're going to get like 10 that's just the law of probability right there are we getting a geode counter then? Part of me thought we didn't need a geode counter because we can just count the geodes ourselves. Because like they're just like in my inventory, but honestly at this point, if we're opening up the geodes on a consistent daily basis like that, then then a geode counter might be warranted. But for now, if we just stick to like 50, 50 magma geodes per day, then we can we can probably do the math reasonably easily. Whether I'm able to maintain a consistent 50 geodes per day remains to be seen. Like we're only up to 11, and it's uh, <laughs> it's already been a, been a hot minute. Anyone been playing lots of Tears of the Kingdom lately? I've been trying to sneak in, sneak in a little bit more Tears of the Kingdom every single chance I get. Honestly, I'm 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 feeling like a little kid again. With how I'm playing playing that game. I'm uh I mean you guys know me pretty well, or you know at least my tendencies towards games pretty well. I'm very much a completionist, a perfectionist, like I go for like a hundred percent and then beyond. Like I make my own challenges because hundred percent's not hard enough for me in a lot of, a lot of the time. It's not enough. I wanna if I really love a game, I wanna I wanna squeeze blood as, as much blood from that stone as I possibly can. With uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I'm taking a different approach. I'm instead, because I realize, like, I don't have the time to commit to, like, grinding out and being a total completionist about it this time. Just because I have, uh, I have other stuff that I gotta focus on. So I'm like, in the times that I do get to play, I'm just gonna, like, let the game guide me. I'm not gonna get too sidetracked. I'm just gonna, like, let the game take me where it goes and try and follow the story, like, loosely. And just, like enjoy the game on its own terms like I'll, I'll let uh i'll let the game take the steering wheel on that one and honestly it's been kind of a nice experience it's, it's been kind of a nice difference a nice different way to approach the game compared to what i'm used to just like following the main quests and stuff it's like it's kind of nice I do, I do still go out of my way to, like, if I see something cool off in the distance, I'll, like, go off to it, and sometimes, like, that can chain into something else you see cool off in the distance, and it, like, continues so on and so forth like that, and then all of a sudden you're, like, halfway across the map, and you, like, forget what you're even supposed to be doing. But I'm, try I'm trying to resist that urge as much as possible. Ba basically, I've imp implemented a sort of, like, rule system for myself in Tears of the Kingdom, where... Because, like, there's always, like, that main quest you got, right? Like, there's always, like, in your adventure log, there's, like, the top quest. Like, you gotta find Princess Zelda or whatever it might be at the time. 
Um, I allow myself, depending on like the, how far away it is, I allow myself just like a certain number of distractions along the along the path to get in there. So like I just kind of like gauge by by eye like how far the distance distance is between me and the next like waypoint that it wants me to go to. And then I'm like, okay, what's a reasonable amount of distractions? And then I start like marking it down. It's like if it's like a small enough distance, it's like I'll allow myself three distractions. Like I'll allow myself to go explore like three different little things. And then after the third one, then I just go like go to the waypoint basically. And that's kind of what's been keeping me going forward. And I think that's better for me this time around. If I were like streaming it or something, or actually like, doing uh doing like a playthrough for, for other people to enjoy, it would be different. I would want to like go and explore as much as possible and do it sort of in my own way. But when it's just for me and when I've got like when I've but only a limited time to do it. I want to make the most out of it. And for me, making the most of it out of it means experiencing it that way. You've already breezed through Tears of the Kingdom story because you were so hooked and you couldn't stop. No spoilers, but you cried. Good to know. I'm, I mean, I'm a sucker for the Zelda games, like the lore as a whole and and the world, and I uh, I don't doubt that I would that I could cry as well, depending on how it goes. You've been doing that, but in the direction of each of the story checkpoints. Yeah, it turns out, like, when you follow, like, a game's main story, it's, like, it's kind of good a lot of the time. It's kind of a good way to experience the game. Almost like they designed the game around the story. At least, like, you know, a large swath of the game, and they want you to experience the story instead of, like, it completely ignoring it and going off on side quests and doing your own thing all the time. Go figure, right? <laughs> Go figure. The, the, the people who make the game want you to experience the game that they that they so that they want you to experience the experience that they so carefully curated for you. Granted, when it comes to open world games, it's a little different because like the experience is intentionally meant to be open ended. So have a good one there, uh, Tenshi, Tenshi clone. Thank you for tuning in. Greatly appreciate the support and enjoy your nap. Yeah, I'm trying not, not to let Tears of the Kingdom take up all my free time. <laughs> like, I want to do other stuff. I want to focus on other stuff. I'm trying to have a diverse subset of hobbies that I that I invest in. So I'm not just like the guy who plays. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not like your average everyday gamer, you know. I play games in my free time. And I play games for for work. <laughs> and when I'm not working, I'm playing more games, which I guess is more your average everyday gamer than anything else, but I'm trying to branch out. Instead of just playing games, I'm playing games and watching TV. <laughs> and going for walks and trying to exercise and and various other things. I do think I have yet to find, like, a good hobby, though. Like, a hobby that suits me the way that I want it to. Because, like, for me, at this point in my life, video games are less of a hobby and more of, like, a lifestyle choice. If that makes sense. I know, like, that, that sounds kind of weird, especially if, like, games are a hobby for you. But for me, it's, uh... <laughs> they're so integrated and so laced with, like, my, my life and my personality and my identity that, I mean, I don't, like... If I really had to, I could go, like, the rest of my life without playing a game. I probably wouldn't be that happy with it, but I could do it. It's not, like, a necessarily defining part of my identity entirely. Or maybe it is, and maybe I'm okay with that. Maybe I'm just making concessions for no reason, but... Going for walks, you mean in the game? No, like, in real, in real life, in Meat Space. Like going out into the into the real world, wildfire smoke in my lungs, just enjoying the enjoying the day or enjoying the night, as it were, because I go out when the sun goes down, because I'm a freaking vampire. Europe friendly stream. I'm happy to provide. 
good Europe friendly stream. Also just good for people who have plans later in the day. <laughs> like touching grass. Not gonna lie. I, I go outside more often these days than I than I used to, that's for sure. But when I do go outside, it's rare that I touch grass. Like physically skin to grass contact does not happen all that often. Maybe like shoes on grass, but even then I'm usually like sticking to like the pathways. I'm not like trampling on the grass because I feel bad for the grass. I feel like it's hard when hobbies become work. You still love them, but they're kind of different. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I feel that for sure. It's it's definitely a different vibe now when I go and play Stardew versus when I played when it was just like a like a hobby, like a pastime. Because now I uh, I treat it more more like a job than I did than I do like a game, and I still enjoy it like a whole heck of a lot. I would not be doing this. I wouldn't have like as many hours as I do in Stardew if I didn't love it, obviously. But it's uh, it's definitely a different vibe than playing it as a as a casual experience, obviously. Keep forgetting this is live, and then go to pause it when you need to get up. It's okay. I can if, do you, if you need to get up, I can just like wait. If you if you need to like go get up and do something or like get some get some tea, go to the go to the bathroom or whatever, just let me know, and I'll just like wait. It's fine. It's just a different kind of pausing. We just have to pause like in real life. First goal in your randomizer room was craft a cobblest cobblestone path. 33 Samson, best of luck to you in your randomizer journey. I hope all your starting goals are are as lucky. Because crafting a cobblestone path, I don't think that's, that's not a path you start with, right? But it's one you can just buy from Robin. So you should be good. And having a path that is uh, having a path at all that you can put down on the farm is pretty nice to help with debris and stuff. During Price Perfection, I sung a song from Hamilton, and that's the first version you heard, and it got you into Hamilton. Really? Was it when I sang "Satisfied"? I think that's like the first song I I sang from Hamilton like in its entirety on stream. I remember that one. I think I sang that one, and did I sing non-stop at some point as well? I feel like I remember that. Either way, I'm glad you got into Hamilton from, from that. It's a, it's a weird roundabout way to get there, but if I can get anyone into Hamilton who was not previously into it, and they and they enjoy their time with it, then I'm, I'm happy to have done my service to have played a part. You will never be satisfied. Would you say you're satisfied with your time watching Hamilton then? I sang Hurricane once. Hurricane's one of my favorite songs from Hamilton, but I I still have not fully internalized like the lyrics in the order that they're actually presented in the song. But th but thematically and musically and all all the other lees, it's a it's a fantastic song. Finally got your pine tar. Only took like 150 to 200 resets. Congratulations, Sarah, as well. Right on, right on. Can't imagine that's a fun reset grind. You literally just like reset, like put the hardwood in the wood chipper and like wait. <laughs> At least with something like this, I'm actively doing something the entire time. I did my shot or whatever it's called. I remember that one because I didn't, I didn't know the lyrics fully and I still don't. So I like had to look it up and then I was just like, <laughs> it felt weird. It didn't feel as organic as I, as a uh, my normal singing tangents, I guess. Someone did the entire An Hamilton musical in Animal Crossing. I actually saw that. I did. I didn't watch the actual musical itself, but I saw it was like in my recommended at one point, and I think I watched like the first few songs of it, and I was like, "This is amazing. They, they, did, they did such a great job." But I didn't have the time to like sit through and watch like the entire rest of it. But it was a, it was a very inspired idea. Yeah, if you want to try the randomizer yourself, uh, there's a link in the description to the rules and guidelines document, and within that document, there's a link to the randomizer itself. You can either choose the hardcore version or the um, or the standard mode version, depending on how hard of a rule set you want to set for yourself. 
But with it, whichever version you choose, like the rules are are open ended for sure. It's an open ended style challenge. It's not hard and fast. Like with the town theme, no, I think the Animal Crossing like uh, Hamilton thing was like they. I don't know how they did it, but it, it, like they had like characters, like they had different characters in their village to represent the different characters in the in the play, and they set like. And they like set up like stages and stuff and like settings and acted out like the whole play to the tune of like the songs. That's the one I remember seeing anyway. Welcome on in, David. David Peterson. We got the iron bar. We are now grinding the iridium to make use of the iron bar via via magma geodes here. Such is life. And as for me right now, I am I am vibing out to this perfection song. Not only is this the song that plays when you get perfection, but it is perfection in a song. Probably it might be my favorite song on the Stardew soundtrack, I'm not gonna lie. I've heard it enough times, and I've, and I it, it it brings a smile to my face every single time. I thought being on the stream soundtrack, it might lose some of its luster as I hear it more often, but because like part part of the enjoyment of the song is that you only hear it when you get perfection, so like you hear it like one time every so often, unless you go out of your way to like listen to it, which which we are right now basically. But even then, it still maintains that magic for me. We currently have two Iridium bars plus this one in reserve right here. So we're we're on our way. We are currently three twentieths of the way to our uh, to our goal. Tried a bit of a perfection randomizer, but the whole one task at a time idea was too limiting for my ADHD brain. Want to find another good long-term perfection-based challenge, though? You could try uh, try the price of perfection if you really wanted to. <laughs> Maybe I know that sort that sort that sort of vibe isn't for everybody either, of the like, the limited spending and stuff. But uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And if you do try that, hopefully it's not. Uh, hopefully you don't have to sleep for a hundred plus years to get an egg, <laughs> like I did. Or if you do have to sleep for a hundred years, make it a make it a stream where you can automate the process and just like hang out with people and have a great time. Cause that makes the whole process a whole lot more bearable, I promise you that. You already did price of perfection. Your longest grind was the skull cavern seeds. That was thankfully one of the shorter grinds for me. I never expected it to be as short as it was, but <laughs> I guess it it got counterbalanced by the cactus fruit and the and the egg for sure. Audrey's got an idea for a perfection-based challenge. I, I need to I need to pay attention. I know you're giving the idea to Cobalt, but I need to pay attention for future challenge purposes. Don't mind me. Don't mind me just out here farming my geodes patiently and stealing ideas from chat. You know what I watched for the first time in a, in a while last time or uh, the other day? Because like I said, I've been kind of like in the spirit of, of rewatching stuff. Like I've been rewatching Breaking Bad. That's the main one. But I've also been like going back and trying to like think of like what movies I haven't watched in a long time. And uh, Pirates of the Caribbean came up as one. And I watched the original for the first time in like a very long time. And I was like this. I was I was I was concerned because I know that critical consensus on like the the sequels at the very least like the pirates franchise as a whole 
is like not that high anymore like it's kind of been tarnished by a lot of his later sequels I, I haven't seen a lot of the latest sequels I don't think um but the original is still it's it's like a classic it is it is, it is a classic for me for sure And it's one of the rare, it's one of the rare movies for me where the best part of it was not, it's not like the characters, it's not the story, it's not the setting, it's not the cinematography, it's none of that. It's the rare exception where the best part of the movie for me, a Pirates of the Caribbean, is the music. The music is, is so classic and so phenomenally done. Oh my gosh, it just, when you hear those, those like, the notes, like the the basic like melody and beat that's associated with like Jack Sparrow, there's is a feeling like no other. I can't even describe it. I can't even describe the feeling. It it just fills me with like this childlike excitement. I guess it's like oh here it goes, here it goes. Da 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 da. Was that Pirates of the Caribbean, or is that something else? That's going to be really embarrassing if that was something else. <laughs> Hans Zimmer sure knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen to that. It was Pirates. I was like 99% confident, but I was like, what if I accidentally sang like a Star Wars theme by mistake when I said that? That would have completely deflated the point. It would have been funny, though. That's for sure. All right. Turn the sound back up. Crank it on up. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Geodes go in. And we're off to bed. The underlying ostinato that drives the main theme is brilliant. For all that it's one note. <laughs> I didn't know it was called an ostinato, but I will be internalizing that because that's a great word right there. Hey Gus, hey Gus. Is your refrigerator Gus? Gus? Hold on, Gus, hold on. Is your refrigerator running? Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Fried eel. Ooh, that's a luck food actually. Um, how much luck food do we currently have? We got two pumpkin soups and one fried eel. All right, I gotta go out of my way to make sure I hit up the saloon. Once it hits noon today, we'll go to the saloon and uh, take care of business there. Because I, I would not mind. E even the fried eel, the plus one luck buff, it's good to have on hand. It's better than nothing. We can do that. We can do that iridium bar. You're right. I, I totally just like spaced on even smelting the iridium. But realistically, with only one furnace to my name, I should smelt the iridium every chance I get. There's no sense in saving up like all 90 of it or whatever and then smelting it all in one one fell swoop. As a fool's errand. Because it would just take so it would take like multiple sleeps to even to even get it all. Alright. And off we go. You like the word ostinato? It's a very fun word. I like I like just looking at it. One of those words that's aesthetically pleasing both to the ear and the eye. Like pizzazz. That's a fun one too. Is smelting the bar considered its own crafting recipe? Thankfully not. There are crafting recipes that can make bars. Um, like the transmute recipes for, for iron, copper, and gold. Like it's just for iron and gold because you can't transmute copper. But the actual smelting process is not a is not a crafting recipe, thankfully. You stand by the word specificity. That's, that's got a good rhythm to it. I really like that one, yeah. It's going to be a much better day for cracking geodes. We can only hope. I'll get the pole set up and we'll be good to go here. We'll we'll lower our our brackets on the pole because we don't, I mean we only got one ore. Let's see how we do here. What's a good range? What's a good range for iridium? We only got one last time. Start a pole. 
how much iridium ore from geodes? I'll just how much iridium ore will will we get? I'm going to go ahead and say 0 to 2, 3 to 5, is that right? Three, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then 6 to 8, and then 9 plus. Maybe that, maybe, this might even still be ambitious, but we'll, we'll set it up for right now. Also, Beatrix fell asleep, don't worry about it. Ask your community. All right. Need some pickaxe emojis in chat, by the way. Pickaxe emojis, as always. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the bread, honestly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna consume it with my with my face, with my mouth. There we go. All right, pickaxe emojis. Somewhere between none and none. Wickedy coming in with the with the counter optimism, the pessimism. <laughs> Let's prove let's let's prove it wrong. Let's get as we we need at least one. There's two. We we doubled what we got last time already, and that's only three geodes deep. You love to see it. We're well on our way. Two iridium ore in three geodes. Let's keep up that pace. I I like those odds. Oh baby. All right. Good start. Good start. Let's go ahead and sort our inventory out a little bit better here. Get rid of that. I don't think you can't sell the dwarf. You can't sell like artifacts to Clint, can you? He only takes mineral minerals. Yeah. Sell, 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 and sell. Good stuff. I'm glad you were wrong too, Wickedy. <laughs> All right. Hopefully you're like mega wrong. Hopefully we get like ten iridium more right now. That'd be huge. Two two whole bars of iridium. From 50 geodes would be a dream. Don't want to get my hopes quite that high, though. Are we making money, by the way? The pickaxe emojis do seem to be doing the trick, that's for sure. Am I making money? I don't remember when I, where I started with my geo grind, but I feel like I've made some money, right? Feel like didn't we start at like six hundred and fifty thousand? So have we really made like almost like ten thousand dollars from from opening geodes? Hey, by the way, four iridium more. <laughs> How do you feel about that one? Ooh, we're officially out of the uh, out out of the losers bracket. We're in the three to five bracket right now. Which is where most people place their votes. Thirty nine percent of chat believes we will get three to five iridium more. 39% is correct, but can we expand upon that even further? Can we go to the freaking moon? Give me that purple good stuff you're telling me. This is what we've been working all, all day for. We grind ourselves away in the mines. We grind ourselves down to nothing. For these lovely little speckled purple and blue bits. Looking like some sprinkles I would put on top of my frozen yogurt. More star shards? You know what? I will take that. I see this as an absolute win. We now have like triple the luck we started with. And there's the big site that we actually have to donate. I'm going to make sure to keep that this time. <laughs> that, is a, that is the final donation we need out of magma geodes, I'm pretty sure. All right, sell, sell, and sell. Toss that, toss that. And process more geodes. 16 more to go. Can we get... A whole iridium bar out of these geodes. Come on, don't leave, don't leave me hanging on four. Don't do it to me, please. Don't. I will. I will be sure to donate it this time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I will not be a fool. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. I'm not giving you my big sight again. Is this Ghibli music, or does it just sound a lot like this? Sound a lot like this? Uh, sorry, I'm tripping over my words. This is from the Wild Frost soundtrack, this song in particular. Oh my god! <laughs> Six iridium ore! What the heck? 
<laughs> we just got... We're up to 10 Iridium Ore? 9 plus? Oh my god! That's so huge! <laughs> two bars! Two Iridium bars! How do we feel about that? Come on, I don't, I don't want to get greedy now, but... Just give me one, one more little taste. One more little taste. Just a teensy weensy bit more Iridium. I mean, I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, that's for sure. Ten Iridium ore. A little bit of coal at the end, you know what, I'm not even mad about it. I'm not even mad. Thank you, Lucky Star Shards. Thank my Lucky Star Shards. Alright. That is a beautiful, beautiful amount of Iridium. What if I just sold it right there, though? Just accidental misclick? I guess I could buy it back, but still. <laughs> Not bad at all. All right, end that poll. 19% of chatters believed in we in that we would get 9 plus Iridium, and I, I just, honestly, I mean, <laughs> I didn't know that that would happen. An exotic ore with many curious property, properties can be smelted into bars, you don't say. And we get to donate a Bixite. Uh, we'll donate it over here, I guess. Good stuff. We just, we leapt straight past the 6 to 8 <laughs> voting range, right into the 9 plus, and I could not be happier for it myself, honestly. I did not believe, I, there was never a doubt in my mind. Not a single doubt, I was, I was full optimism all the way. Now, will we beat that tomorrow? I mean, there's a difference between optimism and just, you know, insanity. <laughs> but there is a chance. I mean, there's always that one, that little 1% nugget of a chance for a, uh, for an 11 Iridium ore drop when we get the Iridium. I mean, I say 1% and you might be like, that doesn't sound that bad, but it's a 1% chance when we hit the 5% chance for Iridium, so it's really, like, a lot lower. Like, what's 1% times 5%? For some reason, I can't do the math in my brain there. It's like 0.05%, something like that. The odds are not in their favor, is all I'm going to say about that one. Oh, but I am high on adrenaline from that 6 drop, but let me tell you what. Pigeon Incorporated, thank you for the two months of support, by the way, at the Neutron level, being a me member for two months. All hail the Star Shards. Star shards emoji incoming. That could be that. Maybe that could be our de facto good luck emoji. Is this just a little bit of star shards? Although I do like having situational good luck emojis, like the pickaxes and the and like eggs and stuff. That's always fun too. What if we just need you know gen generic good luck? I think we found our. I think we found our hero here. The star shards are doing it. 0.0005% chance. Oof. If that's if that is the if that is the correct number there, then uh, you're tell you. I mean, you're saying there's still a chance at the very least. <laughs> How's that for a star shards emoji? It, it you know that's pretty accurate. Honestly, as far as like default emojis go, the little sparkle emoji is pretty nice. Add horses. It's not zero, exactly. It's higher odds than, like, winning the lottery. Point zero 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 five times three, because we got three star shards for good luck. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Who needs the special charm to boost your daily luck every single time when you, uh, when you got star shards? I've said, I've always said that. Every time I get the, spe the special charm, I'm just like, man, just give me more star shards. Can anyone recap the steps to get a desert obelisk and which ones we've already done? Step one, get to the, um, if, if we're going just from, like, if, like, let's say that get... Get the Desert Obelisk is your first goal, right? Step one, get 60 donations at the museum in order to open the sewer. Step two, 
use a chair to clip into the mutant bug lair from within the sewer in order to get the dark talisman and complete the quest line that unlocks the wizard's tower to build the buildings. Step three, everything else. <laughs> step three, well, step three is to like get, you got to get to the desert in order, you got to like complete some of the bundles in the community center in order to access the desert, like the vault and everything. That's a total own ordeal, but we've already done that. So we don't need to worry about that. Then you can just buy the co coconuts. Oops, I skipped a skipped a geode there. That's my bad. Then you can just buy the coconuts and the um, cactus fruit from Sandy at the Oasis. The iridium comes from basically what we're doing right now. From having got the, the furnace from the blacksmith bundle and now smelting the iridium ore. Or you can get the iridium from Skull Cavern itself directly via treasure rooms. Which also involves going through the mines and getting the skull key, but that's, you know, that's a story for another day. And then, uh, whatever your preferred money-making method is. Did I miss anything important? I don't think so. One of your confusion was solely over how you complete it without completing the community center slash Joja. Yeah, it is a the the chair skip comes in clutch on that one for sure. Not a chair skip that comes up all that often, because really who needs to like who needs to do that? By the time you get to the sewers, you usually are like pretty close to completing the community community center or Joja Mart anyway. The uses for that particular chair skip to get into the mutant bug layer are relatively niche, but we're living in the niche. The niche is is my friend. You missed the stream where we switched to a new goal and planned it out. That's fair, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> I mean, that part of the plan has always been the part that's, like, confused people most, I think. Especially if they weren't there to see it and, like, actually experience it as in, in real time. Then, and if you didn't know that the... That you could get into the mutant bug layer with the chair, then it would be... It would be a whole nother beast. We would have to go Jojo Mart at that point if we, if we weren't... If we weren't able to get into the mutant bug layer that way... We would not be able to complete the community center as is, and we would have to go Joe Jamar, I think. You missed the lose sanity somewhere in the process step. I already factored that into... I, I accounted for that factor because I lost my sanity prior to the, starting the process. Hence the reason I came up with like the perfection randomizer and have started this challenge in its hardcore mode. Anyway, There's got there's got to be, you know... There's got to be a screw loose somewhere up there to to enjoy this sort of grind, but you know what? If if there is a screw loose up there, I'm I'm happy to leave it loose. I'm happy to un I'm happy to unloosen or to loosen even more of them if need be. And clearly, I'm not the only one who enjoys this sort of thing. So, <laughs> I I embrace my insanity. Can't lose what you don't have in the first place. I got nothing left to lose. I'm like, uh, I'm like Cass from from Tank from the Tangled TV show. I got nothing left to lose, baby. Look at all that iridium. That's two bars waiting to happen right there. I don't even have enough Fernai to smelt all those bars. The furnace makes a lot a lot of goals so much easier if you can get bars. It's true. Like having the furnace is going to be so helpful. Like now, if we get a uh, like a goal that's like upgrade a tool, now like because that that goal previously was like pretty hellish because like you need to get either get the furnace from uh, from like getting bars from the trash or you need to get the bars from the trash directly to get like five for an upgrade or something like that. It was just a it was it was not a pretty thing. But now that actually like getting the furnace is a little more attainable. With the, with the recent rules change, it's not so bad. And, and now that we have it, now that we have the furnace, I'm, I'm over the moon. The world is our burrito. Ferni? What's wrong with Ferni?
Cactus becomes cacti, Furnace becomes Ferni. They both end in the us sound, so, like, what's the, what's the problem? You, want, you really want me to say Furnaces? That's vulgar. What's the, what's the strategy for the rest of the money? Probably some combination of geode farming and clay farming, I would say. We'll get some money from opening these geodes, obviously, but we're not going to get the... We're not... Well, in all likelihood, we're not going to get all the way to a million dollars just by opening magma geodes and selling the contents. But now that clay farming is on the table and combine that with some geode farming here, on, here and there just to mix things up, I think we'll be okay. Most of that will probably uh, will probably happen off stream too, depending on how things go. Furnaces, sussy furnace. I think the furnace vented. I still have not played Among Us, by the way. Still have never ever played Among Us. And I think I'm I'm past the prime where I could like find anyone to play Among Us with. Like there was a time where a lot of people, even like my my own like personal circle of friends were playing like among us like every single day or like a, like once a week kind of thing even when they could get when they whenever they could get the, whenever they could get the chance and their schedules all lined up i missed that boat your research team is presenting your findings in, in front of donors in an hour so you can't stick around but you'll watch the vod emmy best of luck to you <laughs> best of luck that's very exciting i hope it all goes well for you and I'll, I'll see you in the VOD. What's the most money thing I can get out of Geodes that isn't Iridium? Star Shards, I believe. I believe, because Star Shards sell for 500 gold apiece. Not that we're selling them. If we, exp if we expand out to uh, to non-magma geodes, like if I were doing this with Omni geodes instead, there would always be a chance at a Prismatic Shard. But um, we're not doing that because farming Omni geodes is a lot more time-consuming, or at least a little more time-consuming on the whole than, uh, than magma geodes here. You've never played Among Us, but you make Among Us references whenever the opportunity presents itself. It's a fun one. I, I always get a little bit tickled when I see something like, you know, when something looks like the little Among Us guy, the little, little, I guess, crewmate you call him. And someone's like, when the, when the crop circle is sus or something like that. And sus, sus and sussy, they're just such fun words to say. Because of their susurruses. What's something weird you would find in a secret room? Working on your store and you have hit a wall? Um, a single half-eaten donut. It's the first thing that came to mind, don't ask me why. How does geode farming work? Basically, um, the rocks that contain geodes are seeded. So they're like, every, every, every seed is going to be different. Every time you start a new farm, the locations of geodes will be different. But they stay consistent between every single day. So at, no matter when I come back, I will always be able to mine this rock and get a magma geode out of it every single time. So once you find a rock that contains a geode, then you can just keep mining that rock over and over and over again. And, and get the geodes out of it. There's a little more nuance to it than that because there are certain things that can change the geode locations, like um, picking up the magnifying glass or getting the um, one of the professions, like the, the gemologist profession or geologist, whatever it is at uh, level five mining. Those change your geode locations, I'm pretty sure. But otherwise, even, even then, after you've done those, if you find another geode rock after that, then it'll stay consistent, so. That's somehow perfect, but also upsetting. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> little half-eaten donut. Whether it has sprinkles or not, I leave open to author interpretation. No worries, Purple. I understand that feeling 100%, having to decompress after work. 
You take all the time you need. Go do something. Go do something fun, and enjoy yourself. Twenty pairs of socks. It would be weird to find twenty pairs of socks in a secret room, but you know what would be weirder is to find nineteen and a half pairs of socks. Like twenty pairs of socks, but then the one one pair is missing its its other half. There's that trope of like you know the the laundry eats your socks, right? That like they uh, like it's easy to lose like a single sock in the lawn in like the washing machine or the dryer or whatever. Um, I have never had that experience. I whenever I wash my socks, I I always come back and all my socks are still there. I think the trope arose because people are forgetful or they like you know are haphazard with their laundry placement. And I'm here to speak out against this. I'm he here to speak for the ones who are cautious, cautious laundry goers who make sure to account for each and every one of their socks when they put it in the, in the in the washing machine or the dryer or what have you. We have been maligned too long. We have lived in silence. And I'm not going to stand for it any longer. I don't know how you lose socks in the dryer. I just don't understand it. Does it, like, fall behind the dryer? Do you just, like, forget that you didn't put it in the dryer? Do you forget to move it from the washing machine to the dryer? There there are so many possible options. And if I were missing a sock, I would be like, okay, let me go to the laundry room. And let, then, like, nine times out of ten, I'll look around and be like, oh, here's the sock. Like, it, like, fell off to the side or, like, or it was just, like, left in the washing machine or something by mistake. Because, like, I can get that. Like, sometimes, like, a black sock or something... It, within the dark bowels of your of your washing machine, you might not see it when you're like heaving the load from one machine to the next. Depends on the type of machine. I doubt I I highly doubt there's a type of machine that like eats a sock though, right? Repair guy had to take apart your apartment machine once and there were 30 plus socks in the machine. What? <laughs> How do they do? They slip through the barrel. They slip through the barrel? Oh my gosh. Like there's like a little gap in between like the tumbler where the tumbler meets the frame of the washing machine and they sneak on in there. How does the washing machine even like last if it's if that can happen? Because like if a sock can get through there, water's getting through there, and I mean the wa the washing machine's probably relatively resistant to the effects of moisture. But like if there's water and detergent and all that stuff sloshing onto the inside of your washing machine, that can't that cannot be good, right? You don't know the technical term, but you think there, but there's a gap. I think it's called the sock hole. If I had to guess, the sock hole sounds about right. Not like a sock hop, but a sock hole. The water has to drain out of it. Yeah, but I assume the drain is set up in a way that, like, it's not going to go through like the the machinery that runs the washing machine. And like mess it all up. Whereas if there's a if there if you're going through the sock hole, then it's uh then who knows where you're gonna end up. Chat, what's a sock hop? I've heard the name, and I, I whenever I think of a sock hop, I think of like um from like the 1950s, like people go into like a like a soda parlor with like the glass bottles of like orange like orange cream soda and like dancing along to a little to a little jig like the like the guys are wearing their like flashy suits that aren't really suits but they're like kind of like half suits and the and the girls are wearing like red dresses with white polka dots on them you know what i mean it's that's that's what i picture when i think of a sock hop but it's just the dance huh I mean, I, there's there's dancing involved in my version of a sock hop, but it has to be at a soda parlor. I don't know why. I just have this like vision in my head of like they're, they're everyone's like 
at the soda parlor enjoying their ice creams and their sodas and talking about the latest automobile in inventions. And then the owner turns on the jukebox and everyone turns into like a flash mob. You wear poodle skirts and stuff. Poodle skirts, I kind of like that. Dance where you took off your shoes because heels would damage the floor. Ooh, I like that lore. That's that's good lore right there. That's good intel. Hence the sock hop. A sock hop is a thing where fireflies, the fireflies do beneath your bed. I understood that reference. Following this tangent to its natural conclusion, do soda parlors still exist? Can you like go? Could I like they they probably do? Would be my hunch. I don't think I've ever seen one in the in the flesh. But I feel like they could be like a like just like a fun novelty to go to every now and again. Where you just go in and like enjoy some soda. That sounds like my kind of my kind of place, honestly. Normies go to, go to the bar after work. Me goes to the soda parlor after work. Or is a frothing glass of uh, of orange crush. Welcome on in, Blue Fire. We are currently geode farming for iridium ore. They exist in Utah. I have one in Michigan. They're like blockbusters. I mean, blockbusters. There's like one blockbuster left, right? I feel like so like soda parlors are more of a a ge generic enough term that there's probably more than one soda parlor left. Pink Crush Supremacy. I can get behind some Pink Crush. Here's the order. It goes pink crush. No, it goes it goes orange crush, pink crush, grape crush. And if there's any other crushes that that I've never experienced in my life, I don't want to know about them because that's the perfect like golden trifecta right there. It's the triforce of of soda pops. Crush is not my go-to soda of choice, but it's got it's got a certain je ne sais quoi that that no other soda has. We do not want any diamond nodes that come up, no, because they give a mining experience. And we would not appreciate that. In fact, a diamond node on its own gives enough experience to level up from 0 to 1 mining and beyond. Not quite to level 2, but uh, but to level 1 at least. Pink Crush is your favorite soda. I can respect it and see where you're coming from, but I'm an Orange Crush enjoyer, personally. A gay crush seems nice to you? A crush in general seems nice to me. Gay or otherwise? Whether it's- whether we're talking the soda or the little- or the little feelings of butterflies in your stomach, when you see someone you- you admire, Is a good time all around. Gay crushes are the best crushes. I will take your word for it. I've never experienced a gay crush. But I have to imagine, like, I've experienced, like, normal crushes. At least I think I have. I don't know. I'm, like, ace, so it's, like, a bit of a gray area. But I definitely have experienced what I would classify as a crush. And it's, uh, it's a good feeling. I mean, it's a conflicting feeling a lot of the time, right? Johnny Rockets in Waterford, Michigan, and Comets in Royal Oak. I assume I assume these are soda parlors because I mean a place like Johnny Rockets is that's that's got soda parlor written all over it. Johnny Rockets. Do you think there's ever been a, a person in history whose name is actually Johnny Rocket? That they like didn't change their name to be Johnny Rocket, like it was like Mr. and Mrs. Rocket named their son Johnny. And not John or Jonathan or anything like that. They actually just named him Johnny. Yes. A gay crush is like an orange crush, but gay. Point taken. Rainbow crush soda. Ooh, that sounds good. 
You know what I haven't seen in a long time is those, uh, like, rainbow sour strip candies. Do you, do you know the ones I'm talking about? They're, like, these, like, long, thin, they're almost like, like, little wiggly rulers. They're just, like, little rectangles that are, like, rainbow, and they're covered in, like, that, like, crystallized sour sugar. I don't know exactly what they're called, if they had, like, a specific brand name or anything that goes with them like that. I always just thought of them as, like, the rainbow strips. I have not seen those in a dog's age. Those are, like, so, so good. But I don't know what happened to them. Maybe I'm just looking in all the wrong places. I could probably, like, go on Amazon right now and order, like, a lifetime supply for, like, $30. <laughs> because I remember them, I don't know, I remember them being relatively, like, inexpensive, too. Of course, nowadays, things are probably different, but... You've seen those at Dollarama? I'll have to go check it out. Those are those are fantastic candy. They might be like I just remembered that thinking of like the like the rainbow crush and I was like, ooh, memory unlocked. New S tier candy discovered. Or rediscovered, I suppose. They used to make bites, but with the sugar on the outside, and you miss them so much. It's it's an S tier candy for sure, and the way you're describing that, Wickedy, it makes me it makes me definitely want to try that. I never I never encountered the bites version, but I have no doubt that they would be they would be in my S tier. The strips on their own. I mean, I have to be careful around them. I <laughs> I could like just slurp those up all day. Oh my gosh, and be and just be so happy until you know I get to the end of the end of the supply, and then I realize that my stomach hurts from such an overindulgence. And I'll be like, I'm never gonna do that again. I feel so bad. I feel so gross. Ugh. And then two days later, I do the exact same thing. That's the that's the lifestyle of a candy enjoyer. It's the vicious cycle that we, of which we all abide. Gorge yourself on candy. Feel horrible about it. Don't do it again for, like, two days, and then do it all over again. Maybe with a different candy, maybe with the same candy. Don't forget the eel in the saloon. You're, you're so right, actually. You're so right. How late is the saloon open? It's open till, like, midnight, right? I don't know if Gus is at the counter all the way till midnight. Because we want, we, I want to try and hit my my 50 threshold of, uh, of of magma geodes here. If I only get to like 45, maybe I'll be okay. Because it is getting a little late in the day, a little long in the tooth here. But that is a good reminder. Thank you, Mary. I've got minecarts. So I'll make it in time. There's there's no minecart next to the saloon. Although I guess the one next to the blacksmith is close enough, so you're probably right about that. I gotta, I gotta factor in the minecarts to my, into my time calculations now. So not used to having the minecarts. It's one of those upgrades that you like get, and then like, if you if you've been playing for a sufficiently long time in the in that save file without them, then like you just like built those habits of not having the minecarts and then you like have to re reaffirm those uh those muscle memories of going to the minecart every time which hopefully it won't take too long to to rebuild that muscle memory for me oh double geode back to back geodes can we get a triple no triple that's okay I think the most geodes I've ever got, like, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back on floors is probably, like, four during one of my times, like, om not omni-geode farming, but just regular geode farming. Back in the day when that was, you know, the prime peak optimum money-making strategy for this challenge. No longer. But I have fond memories of it, nevertheless. Like, I remember the time that I mined a rock and got a geode. I remember the time that I mined a rock and got another geode. Then there was that time where there were the two rocks right beside each other, and I mined both of them and got two geodes. Holy. Alright, 45 geodes. I'm gonna I'm gonna cash that one in a bit. Came up a bit short today. That's alright. Not every day can be uh 
and be full of full of luck. But even with our five geode shortage, I have full confidence that tomorrow we're we're still gonna get a plethora of iridium ores. Will we live up to the ten from the previous fifty? Couldn't tell you. It remains to be seen, but I think there's a chance. I think there's there's always a chance. All right, buy all the fried eels. Thank you, Gustavo. And I'm out of here. I'm long gone. All right, tomorrow. I was going to say tomorrow's Queen of Sauce, but it's actually not Queen of Sauce, right? I mean, it is, but it's not like a Queen of Sauce that we need because we've already got every Queen of Sauce now, so... The first Queen of Sauce that we can pass up. Also, I should remember to get this, because it's a, the day is a multiple of three. Excuse me. Oh, there's no path here anymore. There's, there's a rock there, dude. In the perfect spot. I can't get around my shipping bin the right way anymore. Rip. Alright. Good stuff. Third Iridium Bar on deck. Let's put our fourth one in there. Yo, we were like one quarter of the way done with Iridium. That's pretty exciting on its own already. Alright, and off to bed, shall we? Bada boom. Alright, we are now officially out of Iridium once again. At least they're out of Iridium ore. Let's say we go get some from Clint. Well, first we gotta check in with Gus. Gotta maintain our chore schedule here. Follow, follow the pattern. Fried eel again? He's got leftover fried eels. What the? What on earth? <laughs> You're telling me fried eel wasn't flying out the door? Well, stir fry. You already know how to cook stir fry, dummy. What's the name of the current song? This one is. Issue with it. It's mines. Open parentheses. Cloth. Close parentheses. Eels for days, baby. I'm gonna get Craig some company, but of the fried variety. Actually, probably shouldn't sh show Craig the fried eels now that I think about it. That's like showing, like, a cadaver to <laughs> to a person. Or even worse than that, like, a cadaver on a plate. And I've got a fork and knife ready to go. It'll be scarring. Mmm, eel. I've never tried eel, I don't think. I think I've uh, I've never been in a position to actually experience it for myself. But a lot of people do like it, from what I'm told. The stream has been extremely lucky. It's been it's been average luck, I would say. I, I think that luck kind of balanced out with our last Iridium Ore Hall. But don't forget that it took us 153 Void Spirits to get an Iron Bar. Never forget that, because that was a, a nine, that was a 5% chance for it to take that long. Less than 5%. So we definitely got a little, a little shafted on that one. But overall, I'd say our, I'd say our luck is pretty good. It's, it's on the rise for sure. You like your fish not so fishy? Does does eel have a distinctly fishy taste? It's extremely unagi. I mean, unagi is like like eel is the prototypical dish for like the unagi taste profile, right? Doesn't unagi just like mean eel? I don't know if anything else has like an unagi taste like eel does, but. Uh... But I know that. Is Unagi like really a taste? Like don't don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Is it actually a taste? Like, you know, there's like bitter, sweet, sour, spicy, and Unagi. Or is are people just like memeing about it? Umami! Umami, I'm so dumb! <laughs> I thought it was like, for some reason, I thought Unagi, and I was like, why did eel get its own special classification of taste? What the heck's umami? 
Umami equals savory? Okay. Crisis averted. I thought eels were their own special taste. And I was, I was going insane. Anyway. <laughs> Unagi is a bit umami. I could probably see that, yeah. It's Geo time, baby. Can we get some pickaxes in chat, please? You pickaxes in chat? I will save the cookies because they're they're number one. They're very chewy. Actually, they're forty three re chewy. Um. Oh hey, good start, good start. That's this is how our last uh, last run of of Geode started as well. So off to a good start here. Also, I forgot to set up a pole, but that's okay. It's not too late. It's not too late to set up a pole because we're still in the very early ranges of our uh, of our iridium. How much iridium ore will we get? We got zero to two, so we're still in the earliest possible range. Then we got three to six. Or three to five. Six to eight. And nine plus. Let's go. Let's freaking get it. And thank you for all the pickaxes, by the way. It's going to make a difference. Don't you worry. It made, it made a huge difference last time. It's going to make an even bigger difference this time. Sell, 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 sell. And move that back there, like so. Actually, we'll leave it like that. It makes more sense. Between none and some, I see you hedging your bets now, Wickety. <laughs> Between none and none did not serve you well last time, so now you gotta, you gotta up the ante a little bit. Oh, hey! <laughs> You're not wrong, though. Four Iridium Ore, we're officially in the next bracket. We're in the three to five bracket now. Little big sight. Glad the iron bar grind is over. Didn't take that long once we allowed access to to void spirits. Go figure. Boom, 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 boom. This feels familiar. This feels very familiar, is all I'm going to say. We're sitting at four iridium ore. We all know what happened last time we were at four iridium ore. I, this, I think the star shards are, are, are coming through in the clutch. D uh, what the <laughs> Really? Am I lived? Did I like reset the day by mistake and I'm living through the same set of geodes now? What the heck? <laughs> and we got 26 to go. All right. Well, there's that. <laughs> and one more to boot. All right, let's keep on. Let's keep the train rolling, dude. Holy moly. I feel like I'm hacking, but it's just it's just the power of the star shards is all it is. And no, no one believed, no one truly believed except for me in the Star Shards. Well, I'm not going to say no one. I'm sure there are those out there, but I feel like most people were not on the Star Shard train. This just shows you the power. We're, we've, we've broken our record, and we didn't even have 50, 50 Geodes to open this time. Boom, 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 boom. I've lost again, and I'm so happy. Never happier to lose. Can we make it to 12? 12 Iridium Ore? Couldn't... There's no There's no way, right? 12 Iridium Ore from 45 Geodes would be unprecedented. That is another Star Shard, though. We're going to have a whole... We're going to have enough for, like, a whole necklace of Star Shards. Just, like, a, a whole big pendant around our neck by the end of all this. Blessed by the Star Shards, baby. a 9% chance to get 6 Iridium Ore from a Magma Geode. Correction, it is a 5% chance to get any Iridium Ore from a Magma Geode. And if you hit that 5% chance, then it's a 9% chance for that drop to be 6 Iridium Ore. So it's it's not quite that clear cut. But still, it is more common than not. Well, not more common than not, but more common than like getting 11. <laughs> Thank you. 
and process. All right, final few geodes here. Let's get her done. I don't know why I kept held held onto that, but yeah, that didn't that didn't take very long to fill up my inventory at all. I just got foolish right there. Don't upgrade the tools. Not yet, anyway. Your time will come, Copper Pickaxe. Process my final few here. Little coal for the road. I'll take it. A lemon stone. No one tell our homie. You know what? We're heading to the mines anyway. Why don't we drop off a little gift with our homie? That seems like a good enough sign to me. All right. Sell and sell. Keep the lemon stone for a gift. 11 iridium ore, baby. I will take it. Take it and run with it. My voice is so soothing that you fell asleep. Fix it. Okay, no problem. All right, guys, we're gonna go and give our we're gonna go give this lemon stone now to the dwarf. Can we get some homies in chat, please? And I, I let some homies in chat while I go give this lemon stone to my best. This is the wrong stop. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go that way. And it's, let's go. We'll do this, and then we'll go do our geode farming. I'm starting to get a little lightheaded from doing this voice. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Oh, I hate that. Someday you'll have to tell me about this beverage you call it. Milk! OMG, please stop. It's one of those bits you can only do in very short bursts, that's for sure. Oh, me! <laughs> I'm the janitor from Monsters, Inc. That is a perfect, perfect analogy right there. This, this is the exact voice. Hopefully I didn't wake anyone up with that one. <laughs> All right, time to hydrate after that, though. Oof. Yeah, combine combine that voice cracking voice with the uh, with the wildfire smoke I got lingering in the air around my domicile. I'm not being kind to my throat today. <laughs> but that's alright. I got the water on hand. I got it ready to go. It's it's at a moment's notice. We got a steady supply. And I will... I'll be okay. Wildfire? Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of wildfires in, in Alberta and BC right now. It's just, you know... It's just Western Can Canada things. They're a lot worse this year than they have been in years past, but I mean, every year we do get some wildfires. Thankfully, there's no wildfire, like, immediately near me, so don't worry about me. I'm going to be totally... I'm, I'm totally safe. I'm fine. But, uh... The smoke is definitely, definitely getting to me and to everybody. I see you as well. Gotta, gotta mute the dings. Not mute, but silence them. Well, not sil silence, but quiet them. How many iridium ores do we need? Um, what what do we have? We have five. Let me think. Hold on a second. I didn't pay attention. Okay. We have five bars already at home, plus the two in our inventory, so seven. So we need thirteen more iridium bars. Thirteen times five is is a. Uh, 65 and we have so we need 64 because we already have one towards that so we need 64 more iridium right i believe my math is correct there 64 more iridium ores we are well on our way you always have wildfires in italy this time of year but this year it's only been floods it's always one extreme or the other isn't it <laughs> Nature can never just leave well enough alone. By the way, this will probably be our last uh, geode farming session for this stream. 
I think what we'll do probably just because I'm looking at the time like where we're at as far as the stream goes I'll probably do this session of geode farming then tomorrow we'll do like debris day clear off the farm as we usually do on Mondays open our geodes and probably call it a day there but that but you know what that means is that we have one more chance to beat our record every single day of geode opening we've beaten our record of iridium ore we went from 1 to 10 to 11. Do you think we can get 12 or more on uh, on tomorrow's Geode opening session? I'm starting to believe. I mean, we started off very, very poorly with 1 in f one ore and 50 Geodes. But ever since then, things have been taken off. In nature's defense, it's largely our fault. True. I mean, most, most wildfires are, are uh, started by human error, I believe. Or human negligence. Just because nature makes it for like prime wildfire conditions where it's like very hot and dry. Doesn't, I mean it still needs something to actually start the fire. Because we didn't start the fire. In this case we did start the fire. Hey, I can't pronounce that name. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Any plans to give Blade another chance to win Stardew Jeopardy? You love that show? I do want to do more Stardew Jeopardy. For sure. I just got to get it all, all set up. I don't think Blade would be the... Uh, I don't, Blade wouldn't be on the next episode. I wouldn't... Because, uh, like... The first, the first and, as of now, only episode of Stardew Jeopardy, that was uh, Blade, Charlie, and Leap. And Charlie won that one. Spoiler, no spoiler. But, uh, so I would invite Charlie back to defend her title, and then I would pr probably invite other, other people to have their shot at the crown. At the Congrats Blade crown. But I definitely would like to do that at some point, for sure. I just gotta, you know... Get my act in gear and, uh, and actually put it together properly. The hello diamond. <laughs> That's the closest the diamond has ever been to my person. I've seen them every now and again here, but having it right next to the elevator like that, just taunting me with its diamond eyes. Diamond eyes me like it's earthbound, and it's, it's it was tempting. I was very tempted, even though I know that mining it would give me a full a full mining level. I was still like, ooh. This look, that diamond's looking kind of nice right there. For sure, Lisa. Yeah, that's actually a good. I th I thought about that because like the first uh, Stardew Jeopardy I did, I just came up with questions on my own and kind of tried to gauge the difficulty myself. But I think if I did another round, I would want to like have like a, a focus group more or less. Like like I'd like want to test the questions to see how hard or easy they might be to the to the average person. I think running by the running it by the mods, doing a fun, doing like a little, doing a little mod uh, round of Stardew Jeopardy could be fun. I will let you know. It would be fun and helpful to to calibrate the difficulty of the questions. You know what I mean? Diamond just wants to go on an elevator ride with you. By all means, if the Diamond Node wants to follow me up to the. Uh, to the main lobby of the mines and wait for me until I can actually level up in mining. I will take it. That said, it probably wouldn't be my first mining level. Like when I get the when I get the gain of mining level goal, I don't think my strategy is going to be to mine a single diamond node. It would be kind of cool. It would, it would be a fun way to like gain your first mining level, but it's far from the most productive. But you know what it is? Speaking of productive, you know what the most productive way to spend your time is? Is by listening to Pickle Jar Rag on repeat. Can we get some PJRs in chat, please? PJR blesses this geode run.
We've not having not been having the best geode luck up until this point. It's like almost 2 p.m. We got 14 geodes. That's not a great rate. But from here on out, from here on in, history has its eyes on you, and also pickle jar rag blesses uh blesses this mess. Therabizna, the Stardew Jeopardy, please stand up, please stand on an iron tripod and call yourself Alex Trivet. <laughs> Alex Trivet. Alex Trivet? Like rivet? Like ribbit? I will consider it. I'll consider it for sure. You know what I did pick up for chat? the other day, this is apropos of nothing at all, but I, I bought a webcam the other day. I needed a webcam for, like, uh, for, for something I was doing, like, in my personal life. I, I needed a webcam, and I did not have a webcam, and then, like, my phone would not do, so I got an actual webcam. So I got, like, a... I technically have, like, a setup now where I could do, like, a face cam thing, and, I, like, the webcam's literally staring me in the face right as we're, as we're talking. So that's that's one barrier to entry that has been cleared, but I still don't know if I'm ever going to do that. It'll be fun though, because it's always been one of those things. Like I've never like really had to have a webcam for anything. I've never needed to invest in one, but I needed one the other day for something, and now I'm like, now it's like there. I'm like, should I try and use it? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but. But it's there. And I don't doubt that eventually you will you will see my mug, but <laughs> face reveal coming up, I mean I'm not that averse to it. I just like look like a normal guy, so it's like <laughs> a no like you're just imagine your your average just imagine like a red haired individual with glasses. And you're like 90% of the way there already. You're like you're you pretty much got it. I'm just like a like a like a person. Hey there, Zeta. If I show you face, then I get the one fan art idea you've had for a while. That's tempting. That's tempting. Can you just do, like, the fan art idea, but just do it with, like, a generic red-headed person? Just, do, just, just draw Ed Sheeran there instead of me. I'm not saying I hold a candle to Ed Sheeran in terms of, like, physical appearance, but, you know, it's not, not so dissimilar as to be unconvincing. Also, he doesn't wear glasses, does he? Cosplay as Chloe for the face reveal. <laughs> that could be fun. Get myself a big old green bow. Nice long, uh, long black wig. That could be kind of fun. Salmon's twin. You know, it's not that dissimilar, honestly. Picturing in my mind right now what Salmon's looks like. There's a there's there's some similarities for sure. Ed Sheeran's not that attractive, says you. Look, I don't I'm not even attracted to to men, but I can recognize that he's uh he's got some he's got he's got some some rugged attractiveness going on there. I respect it. This is horrible geode luck. This really is. <laughs> like this is this is not good. That said, I'm not as like laser focused on my geode farming as I otherwise could be. I'm trying to also maintain a dialogue with chat here. I think if I do some geode farming off stream to get uh, a whole bunch of them for more iridium, then we'll I'll be better off. I'll have better geode rates, and then we'll just be able to skip right to the good part next time. So probably like later tonight after the stream, I'll take I'll take a little break, maybe go for a walk or something, and then come back and actually do some geode farming in my off time. So we have a whole bunch in supply for tomorrow's stream. 
Oh, don't miss that. The geo rates are so so low you can't afford to miss a rock. Tend to prefer average looking people, not gonna lie. Hey, yeah, you know what? Fair enough. I mean, not every not everyone's gonna be attracted to all the same stuff as everyone else. If it, if that were the case, it would be a very boring world indeed. But maybe it'll be great or luck. Yeah, maybe we'll get like like we only got twenty two geodes so far today. But what if all twenty two of them have iridium ore in them? Even if it's only one ore a piece, that's twenty two iridium ore. There's always a chance. There's always a chance. Actually, I don't know if there is a chance. I don't know if there's anything in like the geode table, like the like the code for the geodes and how they work, that precludes you getting like back to back iridium ore or something like that. Hot people didn't develop personalities as kids. I'll give you a plus two for the joke, but also, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, largely not true, I would say. There's no, there's no doubt that uh, whether we like it or not, your physical attractiveness does determine various parts of your upbringing and your life as, in general and will mold your personality to a certain extent. But, I mean, we can't homogenize people, attractive or not, into... into into buckets like that, but it is a good joke. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Everyone's attractive to the people that li that live with them, and that, or to the people that like them, and that's all that matters. Absolutely true. Could not agree more. Find you someone that looks at you. The way Beatrix looks at these magma geode rocks, and you'll be uh, you'll be living a happy life. You can be treated differently your whole life based on how you look in that shape suit. So, yeah, it's definitely like not a non-factor for sure. And to, to claim otherwise is just ignorant of reality. But uh, it's a, it should be it should it's a relatively minimal enough factor for for most people, I would say, especially in the modern era. But it's not a not a non-factor. Kindness is hot. Absolutely true. One more. I don't want to mind that rock by mistake. That's that's honestly the one nice thing about uh, about these rocks, like the fact that they take multiple hits like this, is that I can't accidentally, or it's very hard for me to accidentally mine a rock and get experience from it when I'm trying to go for a different rock. Because there were a couple times, very select few times, when I was like geode farming on like floor one, and I would get. Uh, and I would mine, like, the wrong rock, like, above or below where the geode was. And there was, like, one rock in particular that was, that did contain ore. And since ore in rocks works the same way as geodes, it's always seeded to be there. And so, every so often, I had to, like, reset a day of geode farming because I accidentally hit that rock. Here, thankfully, that's never going to be the case. Unless I accidentally just, like, oh, jeez, oh, butterfingers, oh, no, I hit this rock, oh, jeez, um, oh. and do that, like, four times. That's, uh... Not that likely. Not that likely, I would say. <laughs> Apparently this is another thing that's different for people who aren't Arrow or Ace. Interesting. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Be being ace probably, and I mean, in fact, being ace definitely um, makes my judgment on like what's hot and not, and what I find attractive, very different from from other people probably.
but I'm glad. I'm glad to have different perspectives and to hear different perspectives. It's honestly one of the big appeals of like streaming and and like content creation in general, building a community like this, is getting so many different uh, people from so many different walks of life, so many different perspectives and and flavors of personality and all these different things that even like if we even when we like disagree on stuff or can like talk about things openly and and talk about this stuff it's 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 a nice learning experience and it's a nice uh, nice dialogue to have and it's crazy to think that for like the vast majority of like human history this sort of thing did not exist like a community like that this was like extremely rare if not like completely non-existent because like most of the time with before like the advent of the internet you could not really it was it was a lot harder you had to go a lot more out of your way to interact with people from such vastly different walks of life than your own like like most people would live their entire lives only knowing the people like in their close-knit community their very close-knit group of friends and seldom venture beyond that now there's been such a paradigm shift towards uh towards variety and uh and getting to meet people from like all over the world from all different you know all different races and genders and and sexualities and and various other you know aspects of life that it's uh it's 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 a big change for sure the big change that i am all here for i'm and it makes me very very glad and very very grateful that I'm growing up in this time in history as opposed to like a different time earlier on where I mean I, I wouldn't have known any different but it would have been a uh, would have been a worse experience probably overall I think you reverse psychology the geodes a little bit yeah we've, we've definitely made up some ground on the geodes here we're almost at 40 I don't know if we're going to quite make the 50 quota like I want to for before the uh, before the end of the day here, but I'm going to make a push for it, that's for sure. Most people think about aesthetic attraction when considering what is hot. Being ace doesn't stop anyone from appreciating how nice someone looks. Yeah, no, I, like, I still, like, appreciate, like, uh like physical beauty or what it is like I'm still attracted to people in that way just like in a different way than than most people and I mean even within like the like aromantic aromantic asexual spectrum it's a spectrum so it's like not everyone's gonna have the same experience or have the same level of attraction to like those physical traits as other as, as other people it's so cool and I wish you know I should probably do like more research into that sort of stuff it's a very very interesting field. Very interesting to just, like, learn about that and see di different people's experiences and walks of life. But for now, just getting to interact with people through this community is enough, is a good enough research vessel for my liking. I'm, I've already, I've learned a lot and uh, expanded my worldview Quite a bit, I would say, since I started streaming. Does luck affect the geodes or not? It probably does. <laughs> but not significantly enough that I think it uh, makes that big of a difference. Like, luck doesn't change where the geode spawns, obviously. The geode is always still going to spawn in the same spot. I think, if anything, luck affects the number of rocks that show up on the floor. Or, like, the likelihood for those rocks to appear on the spot where the geode is. I don't know that for a fact. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's the way that worked. You're demisexual and your roommate is an ace demi-romantic. Well, there there you go, exactly. There's all, there's already so much, like, so much variety and differ, differing experience and values and stuff there. You can get a lot of value out of that, just of like having conversations between each other. You thought that luck specifically accepts geodes? It might, yeah. 
I don't know. I'd, I'd have to, that's something I'd have to look up on the wiki or do some experimentation with or or ask Blade or something about. But for now, it is... I mean... I've done enough geode farming in my time that I feel like I would have noticed the difference between, like, a good luck and a bad luck day. The fact that I was able to get, like, very consistent rates when I was doing just, like, regular geode farming, like, I was always able to get consistently within the same, like, like, 5 to 10 total geodes per day when not even paying attention to the daily luck was, uh, was enough for me to probably say that it doesn't have that much of an effect. Either way, we're closing in on our 50 geodes here. I think we can make it. We got, we're got we up to 46 now. There's no way I'm ending on a non-multiple of, of 5. I was going to say a non-multiple of 50, which I mean, I guess is also technically true, but, <laughs> but 5 is what I meant to say. I'm not just going to stop at like 47 geodes. That's just, that's just silly. Ain't no way. Could not be me. Oh. Worse luck adds more rocks, so I might have more geodes. <laughs> little little reverse luck psychology on the geodes, maybe. Does worse luck add more rocks? I was always under the impression that like better luck added more rocks, but like they added rocks in spots where it's like more likely to intercept with like staircases and and ores and stuff, but. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken on that. I don't know. I don't know the full ins and outs of it. Gus alert! Thank you, Mary. I actually did remember Gus. Believe it or not, even though I didn't bring it up until you mentioned it, I had it on my mind. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get these. I'm gonna get this 50th geode, and then I'm gonna go to the Stardrop Saloon, and we'll we'll punch out for the day, more or less. Thank you for the reminders, Mary and Smiley, and uh, and and Laisha as well. Thank you, thank you. This last geode is for all of you, for all the people reminding me. Let's go get our fried eels today. Stale though they may be, they still provide the luck buff, and that's all that counts. Stale eels. That's uh, there's there's no way. Number one, stale eels, great band name. Number two, there's no way that it's that it tastes any good anymore. I feel like a stale eel is just like eating a rubber hose. Just based on what I know about like eels and the process of staleification, which I think is the scientific term. Stale luck, baby. Greasy but but flavorful. We'll take it. Alright, so tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and do We're gonna go open these geodes, we'll do debris day, and then we'll be uh done for the day, I think. If we're doing Debris Day, I should get, um, what should I get? I, I should get my tools out as well. Well, I'll get, I'll get them out once I come back from, from opening Geodes. We'll do the Geodes first. And then wind down with a little bit of, of uh, Debris Clearing. It's been a while since we cleared the Debris off our farm, to be honest. Five Iridium Bars. Yo, we actually, it's, look, it's, we're almost ready for Ginger Island. We just need 200 hardwood. <laughs> Oy vey. All right. Get some more iridium smelting, and we're off to bed. Maybe the grease prevented it from stalefying? We can only hope. Six iridium bars and a partridge in a pear tree. Alright, uh, what's Gus got for sale today? Let's find out. Do you think he's- there's no way he'd serve- th he'd serve fried eels or any variety of eel three days in a row? Trout soup? He's on that fish grind. I'll give him that. But uh, trout soup is not something we're all that interested in. I'm speaking a Ginger Island goal into existence. I should stop doing that unless I actually want it. I'm just saying, you know, maybe Ginger Island is not that bad. If we roll, like, you know, like if our next goal is just, for instance, you know, like, ship a banana... Maybe it wouldn't be the end of the world. 
like sure 200 hardwood that's going to be a lot of hardwood to grind up but obviously i mean we have the potential to do it maybe may, you know what maybe maybe I sh maybe we shouldn't even like worry about checking the randomizer for that one we know it's just going to give us like a nasty goal like that anyway let's just l take our own initiative and go to ginger island on our own <laughs> Take control of my fate in my own hands. Alright. Before I forget here, because it's on my mind, let me set up a poll for today's geodes. How much iridium or will we get? Alright, 0 to 2. 3 to 5. Six to eight. And nine plus. I, I, I almost typed 98 plus. That would have been that would have been a great day. <laughs> Alright. And this does not this this count does not factor in the one iridium ore that we already have. So at the end of the geode opening session, we will subtract one iridium ore, and that will be our final total. Will I get 12 today and make my make a new record for the third day in a row? I don't I don't want to speak anything. I don't want I don't want to say anything and jinx it. All I'm going to point you to is the second slaughter in our inventory. There are four lovely pink crystallized stars sitting right there. Draw your own conclusions. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. We need 64 more ore, in addition to the one that's in our inventory right now, in order to finish this iridium grind. 64. Although part of me wants to finish the grind with the uh, with iridium from Skull Cavern, get an actual bar or two from the from the chests in Skull Cavern. I think that could be a nice way to supplement this. I'm not sure. I haven't been paying attention to how many jades we're actually up to right now, but. Uh, but we gotta be close, getting close to another Skull Cavern dive, right? I am still live, Laney, at least for a little bit longer here. You came at a perfect time. We're about to open some some magma geodes for Iridium. And then we will uh, do Debris Day, and that's gonna be about all she wrote for today. Alright. Drop some pickaxes in chat, please. The pickaxes have been working wonders. No word of a lie. A little pickaxe luck, please. Start off with a Dolomite. As you often do. Three iridium ore! Boop! <laughs> that came from a single pickaxe in chat, I bet. Uh, I barely, we've barely even touched, scratched the surface of pickaxe emoji luck. Holy. Off to a great start. Two geodes in, and we're already in, in the second bracket of, uh, of our poll, of our polling structure. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Don't sell the iridium by mistake. That would be that would be foolish, foolish. Process more geodes, please. Let's go. Look at that just swath of pickaxes in chat. Thank you so much. I can feel more iridium more coming already. It's oh well, maybe it was just that iron ore. That, that is a lot of iron ore. Iron ore, gold ore. Throw me a little copper, let's get the trifecta, and then we can get the iridium after that. For the quadrosaur. Nope, not process. We wanna shop. Alright, please. 35 more geodes. Still got still got plenty of time. Plenty of room to get uh well we need nine. We need nine more iridium ore to beat our record. We got this. I am not concerned in the slightest. That's a lot of stone. Who are you, my dad? Just sending me all this stone? What the heck, Clint? Uh, we'll toss the stone, yeah. There we go. 27 more. I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about these last 25. Even if even if the three that we got is all we get today, I'll still be happy. 
That said, we've got a tradition to keep up here. We've got we've got a record to break. Ooh, another star shard. If we get one star shard, like every single uh, iteration of geodes here, for every single round of 50 geodes, we'll be rolling in luck by the end of all this. A little bear, right? If I haven't seen that in, that one in a while. Five lucky star shards, baby. Five star shards. Come on. I don't need these computers. Get me out of here. I already saved the dwarf gadget at home for, for the farm computer. You don't gotta take care of me anymore, game. I got I got that one on lock. Nine more magma geodes in a dream. We can make this happen. Come on, just just one more ore so we can get a next our next bar. I'll be a happy camper. Please. You've been you've been too good to me already. I appreciate it. If you could just be a little bit better to me, just a, you know, a smidgen. Just a smidgen. Give me that last ore I need to see this through. Two geodes remain. Come on. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna look at Clint Clint's shop. Come on. Ten iron ore? Come on, please. Round it off with a dolomite. We started with a dolomite, we end with a dolomite. It's all good. Three iridium ore. Not bad. Still not bad. 25% of chat landed in the correct uh, in the correct bracket there. We didn't beat our record, but you know what that means? It means that we're going to dwarf our record in our next set of geodes. So don't even worry about it. All right. Um well, with that out of the way, let's head on home, head back to the bus stop here. We'll do our debris clearing for the day and then we will call it a stream, I think. That was rough. It's not the roughest that it's been, though, thankfully. We've we've always at least gotten one iridium ore from our from our geodes. Did I call Gus today? I don't remember. I have made over 20k doing this. You're not wrong about that. Yeah, that's definitely notable. Trout soup. That's right. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get some tools for debris clearing. I'll grab my axe, my hoe, and we'll grab the obsidian edge. Why not? All right, let's go clear the debris. Nice to get some cool, refreshing air after uh, after spending so much time in the in the mines. It's been a mines-heavy stream. So we get a little bit of greenery out on our farm here is pretty nice. Artifact spot up by the bus stop. I, I did. I have been noting those artifact spots. There's one right here, and there's one over here as well. Take care of business. No, we weren't missing out on too much, clearly. Maybe I should have specified I want Iridium Ore. You got a great point. I'll, t I'll take the blame for that one. I'll take the blame. Alright. Holy moly, the debris is... is out of control a little bit. There's a lot of grass growing here. I mean, I did that part, but the the stones, holy the stones. Okay, well I see that tree there, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Don't block me in here. Perfect. All right, we actually get around there. That's nice. A few tree seeds down here. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's just let's just check this field just to be on the safe side because this this field's always pretty easy when it comes to clearing debris. Grab a cockle for the road as well. Not the sea urchin though. Uh, not not a shell, but but seaweed is okay. All right. Now you're wondering what the mines smell like. Probably some combination of like petrichor. And uh, mildew would be my guess. 
Although it depends on how, how deep in the mines you are. Because once you get down to, like, the 80-plus floors, you're going to start smelling a lot of, like, brimstone and stuff, too. Like, sulfur and stuff, probably. That would be my guess. Smell musty and earthy. I feel like the, the ice section of the mines probably doesn't smell like anything. That's, that's the thing about cold, is that cold things don't really, like, smell like anything. I feel like the colder something is, like the more frozen something is, the less likely it is to smell like anything. Is there an actual is there actual science behind that? Because like you might think like he's memeing, like th like cold things obviously have smells, but I think they have less smells than the average like thing. And I feel I feel like there's something to that because like what causes smell? Smell is caused by like things wafting off. Of, of the material into your nose. So if something is colder, something something being colder means that the atoms that are composing it are less agitated, like they're not moving around as much. So maybe because they move around less, they don't like get released into the air as frequently, so the smell is diminished. Did I, am I some, am I on the right track? Smell particles can be driven off by heat. Think hot coffee versus iced. Oh, when you say driven off, you mean like driven into the air, not like driven off into like the unknown. Like Elsa. Less molecules f fly into the air. That is my general consensus. That is my hypothesis. Got to put it up to the scientific method to be sure, though. I can't get into this. There's like a little, like, a little nook. There's like a little grove in here that I cannot access, I think. It's like if I go up there, that's, there's like a stone behind that tree. I think we're just going to have to leave that one be and hope that hope that it doesn't grow into anything too, too terrible. I think I see like a tree already blooming over there, though. Blooming and burgeoning and blossoming and all the other B words budding. Sounds good. It checks. Everyone says it checks out. Congratulations, everyone. We solved smell. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Next up, taste. Why do some things taste different than other things? Has anyone solved this yet? Has it, does anyone know? We're so smart. So true. Smart, Smartest community on YouTube, for sure. Smartest, kindest, most attractive. You guys take all the boxes. Oh, ah. Uh. I knew there was gonna be something there. I was like, "That's that feels." It felt. I don't know what I could, what, what I could tell you. It felt like a piece of wood more than it felt like a stone. I know that sounds crazy. It's like, how can you tell the difference between a piece of wood and a piece of stone? They both block you the exact same way. I'm telling you, there's an there's an imperceptible difference, and I could feel it there. And I think the debris is as good as we're gonna get it. Go do a quick run through Cinder Sap Forest, and then we will we'll clock out the unified theory of taste and smell. No one's ever dared try before. Taste is mostly the same as smell, so that's already sorted. But like cold things, still taste like they still taste. You, they still have a taste to them, or is like. Like, I feel like cold does not inhibit the taste receptacles as much as it does the smell receptacles. But that's got to be because of, like, the direct contact that it makes with your actual, like, taste buds, right? Like, it, like for taste, you don't have to worry about the particles going into the air and reaching your nostrils. And, uh, 
and and stimulating your olfactory senses. You actually like you actually just like smush it into your taste buds and grind it all together with your teeth and stuff. It's because your mouth is warm. Holy moly, you've cracked the code. It's because your mouth is warm. It's because your mouth warms it up if it so it's cold, so it's not cold anymore. Never thought about it. You're a genius, Colleen. Holy moly. Taste is a big part of smell. I think smell is a big part of taste. I think I think it's I think you got that backwards. Why do you like the smell of coffee but not the taste? There are a few things that are like that. Like most things taste the same as they smell. Um, but there are exceptions. There are exceptions. I'm kinda with you. Like I I enjoy the smell of coffee decently. It's not like my favorite smell, but it's uh but it's not the worst smell in the world by any stretch of the imagination. And if coffee tasted to me the exact same as it smells, I would probably like it more. There's a big bitter aspect to coffee that isn't present in the smell. Can something smell bitter? I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe that's the key delineating factor between like things that like smell good but don't taste great. Does does bitter have a smell? I feel like I'm trying to think if I've ever smelled something like bitter. I've smelled you can smell things that are like pungent. You can smell things that are like spicy. You can smell things that are sweet. I feel like I've I i do not Acrid, I guess, yeah, acrid might be bitter-ish, bitter adjacent. I don't know if like bitter cleanly translates to a smell the same way a lot of the other ones do though. There's a lot more debris in the forest than I realized, by the way. I thought I thought I thought this would be just a quick little so sojourn out to the forest, but no siree Bob. And don't call me Bob. I think it's because this is the first time we've gone to the forest since the turn of the year. And at the start of a new year, I think a lot more debris spawns than, than otherwise noted. Only when something's been in the burner too long. Is a burnt smell a bitter smell? Or is it just like a burnt smell? Is it its own classification? Because I feel like if I eat something that's burnt, if I eat something that's burnt, I'm not, I would not classify something that tastes burnt as tasting bitter. I would classify it as tasting burnt. Is it this, is that the, is that a new chat? Is burnt its own taste? Like, like umami? I feel like burnt is like, it doesn't fit cleanly into any of the other definitions. Alright, I think we're, I think we're good for debris here. We gotta head back home. You don't think any of the basic tastes have a smell? You, I, I, I would say that sweet has a smell. Sweetness. There are different, like, varieties of sweetness, but I think I can say, smell something to say that smells sweet. Or that smells spicy. Or that smells, maybe not sour. Well, actually, sour, I think you can smell. You think burnt is just extremely bitter? I'd have to eat something burnt. I, I'm not in the habit of eating burnt things, believe it or not. But, uh... Maybe, I, maybe for science. Alright, I'm gonna sell these cockles. And everything else we're keeping. Alright, perfect. Then let's go ahead and deposit all the stuff we don't need for geode farming here. Put away the rest of this noise. Sort out the inventory. Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Grab our final geode. Seven iridium bars. Would you believe that we started this stream with zero iridium bars? We did we did have 14 iridium ore, but all of a sudden, being going from zero to seven like that in a single stream. Chat, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, 
And we're at almost like 70% of our of our money goal. This desert obelisk might be coming faster than any of us expect here. I'm probably going to do some geode farming off stream in order to help facilitate that. It's another 100 gold towards it right there. I am feeling confident about our odds here. I don't I'm not saying we're gonna get the desert obelisk on tomorrow's stream. That's not what I'm saying. But you know, if we if we wanted to stream a little extra long tomorrow, if we get close to getting the desert obelisk. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Probably next week though. Probably next week, if I'm being realistic with myself. I think next week we could definitely swing the desert obelisk. Either way. I think it's time to let Beatrix rest for a little bit here. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey to get our furnace and our iridium and all this good stuff. I hope you've had a fun time here, a fun, relaxed little time on Fractured Farm. I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place, where we'll pick this up again. Probably not as much geode farming tomorrow. I'm going to try my darndest to do a lot of that uh, between streams here. And then uh, go from there. So, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey. And I will see you on the flip side. Be good to one another. Be good to yourselves. And this is Argon Matrix signing on out. Thank you and have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.